Welcome to the show. I'm James. I'm David. I'm Riley. And today we are discussing the 2017 movie Logan, as well as the X-Men franchise in general. We'll laugh. We'll argue. We might get a little too into it, but at the end of the day, they're just movies. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Yeah, what oh, do you God. do? I was going to do first Logan be like, spoiler alert, but it's like, I can't, I can't he do should it. Just and then I should have done like uh, Laura. Spoiler <laughs> 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 You say in Spanish? <laughs> yeah. I don't know what that is. I don't know. Uh, did not in a five star review, Brewdog Stan writes, "They're not just movies, but you because you made them bigger than they ever were." <laughs> thank you, <laughs> Br- thanks, Brewdog. That pulls at my heartstrings truly. It um, does. Thank you. Uh, particularly now. And a note on that: a word. Um, yeah. From the announcement that this show is only it's in its final episodes. I just wanted to clarify some stuff because it kind of it seems like the response is like it came across as we are being canceled i didn't mm. say that i said the show is canceled it's not happening to us it's, yes it's it's more complicated than that is being driven also by people at this table namely myself i'll 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 put that i'll, I'll carry that ring um there were fists thrown here's what you guys I'm need to kidding. understand it was a joke i've seen comments like guys it's only like two hours a week why can't you guys make it's time to do this thing the thing is like our job is really hard. The pace at this company is very fast. To do that for five days at the uh, and you get two days a weekend and you're on your weekend, you're like, Ugh. and then on your Sunday night, you have to, oh God, I got to watch a movie. Yeah. And that comes at a cost. Like, oh, bo- oh, boohoo, you have to watch a movie. You don't understand. Like that means like it's a zero sum game. That could mean I'm not helping put these two kids to bed. Instead, I'm downstairs watching a movie, mm-hmm. like or or I have to go to the theater. Mm. Yeah. yeah, or like I have to take a different ferry home <laughs> from the island so that when I get home, I have time to watch a movie. Or I have to stay up till two in the morning. You know how often this guy is on three hours of sleep on this show, <laughs> like I am right now. Um, yeah, I mean that. I don't, it's weird. I, this is a, exactly what happened last night, where I didn't have time to watch a movie. So and, and then I was like, "We're recording tomorrow. I gotta do it." I was up till like three a.m. and then yeah. my kid woke up. And here we are. Yeah. I think it's really tough on weeks two that you're not super pumped about the movie, and then you're like kind of pushing. Or it you're off, out of town, off. and yeah. you spent seven hours in a car in traffic, and then yeah. you have to watch a it's movie, tough. and like it's. I, uh, I do want to acknowledge that this is sounding very, very uh, yes. like first world. Problems. Of course, but I just want to say that it's not always like that super fun on top of the rest of your job. Like it is a bit of a, it has a strain on relationships and stuff like that. So it's not like mm. that easy. And then on top of that, like it's like five to ten percent of your work week when you think about like if this takes a couple hours like if this ends up taking half of monday imagine what you can do in your job with another like five to ten percent of your week like all the other things and that's another big driver of this is like Mm. we have important jobs you guys yeah (laughs) and i think that like i you know that some people were saying online that like oh not a ton of people but i saw one or two people saying oh i guess lmg is just about money or whatever but i think that at the end of the day if you actually look at what uh we as a corporate entity are doing the fact that everything else is running like so tightly and people are passionate about what they're doing and we're putting out lots of different types of content uh and then over here we got this movie podcast which is fun to do but it's just it just really doesn't make sense as part of the portfolio when it's just kind of like a drag compared to the it's rest it's not of linus it's not tech tips yeah and i think and it's been great that they've supported us it sure it, has and i really want to get that across like people some people are throwing shade at linus and shit like Man, the no, fact that we get to great. do this at all has been has been awesome, and they yeah. supported us greatly. Um, and and once again, you you know were the were the one who were kind of who, who kind of did the calculations there, and were, and was kind of like, okay, I don't know if this makes sense anymore. But we talked about it all three of us. Well, the thing is, like, when it's putting a strain on your life outside of work, when that's happening, and you you make the appraisal of like, is this worth it? Then you left. You look at the view counts and stuff, and like and everybody hates the name and all you're just like am i doing all this shit for something that i'm like proud of and i'm making a difference honestly if you guys didn't meme about carpal critics so much then maybe we'd still be here this is your yeah fault. this is your fault you guys that's a joke it's a joke or if, whereas if it's like oh man this is kind of a drag but hey it's the number one movie podcast in canada god damn it like yeah. then i'm like fired up but right. it's not and so it's just kind of like there's other things i can do with my time at work that are gonna help you know create products that you guys love in the other channels here um, yeah. there's and, other demands on our time so and again we've been doing it for three years it's not like we didn't give it a shot you know it's and you not think like, I don't love this time with my best with the carpool <laughs> <laughs> my best uh 
<laughs> Insert work. I, for one, am looking forward to being able to talk about movies freely again. Oh. It's been hard. I can't hang oh, out with yeah. you guys because we just want to talk about movies. Yeah, we're that's not allowed true. To. That's true. Every, every time. The podcast, they yeah. The podcast. When we're, that's that, honestly, that's the most annoying thing. We're like out in um, on the studios and we're like, oh, did you see this? It's like, yeah, it was so cool. Oh, save it for the oh, podcast. Just, you just like just cut that conversation off. Anyways, oh, uh, just a shout out to a couple of people emailed acknowledging or pointing out the fact that their them listening to this has driven them to go deeper into other parts of LMG instead of the opposite. It's not like hmm. I was an LMG super fan and that's why I'm here. That's a lot of people, but for some people, they're a fan of this and that is what drove them to like get a screwdriver. That's really and cool. So that's uh, <laughs> yeah, that's true. thank you for pointing that out. Like they, usually, it's in like a context of like you know, the financial impact of this, uh, of this show that might not be, um, appreciated, but so cool. Thank you people. Thanks to everybody who wrote in some of your like letters were like actually touching. I'm like, mm. wow. I didn't know that me just like sitting down and shooting the shit with my buddies about movies. It's like really making a difference in someone's life. And f- to you, I'm truly sorry that we're ending, but you know, huge back catalog. That's true. You forgot what we said about uh, Saving Private Ryan. You should go watch it again. And I forgot what we said about Joker because we never published it. We're going to do it again. But we're going to. But not next weeks. week. Next week we're going to do a Christmas movie. Woo, oh, wait, the not two, I said Christmas. two weeks. It's in three weeks, three I guess. Weeks. That's right. Yeah. We're going to do Die Hard, Woo. then Avatar. Two. Yes. Way and, of Water. That's Avatar. right. And then Joker. And then the, uh, the Die Hard episode is going to be a Sarah episode. That's, that's right. That's Yay, next week. That's exciting. She'll be back. But this week, it's Logan all week. So, David, what do you give this movie out of 10? Logan is at its best when it's celebrating old man Logan, and it's at its even best arrest <laughs> when it's deconstructing him. In my opinion, Logan is one of the top five superhero movies of all time. Yeah. 9.1 sure. out of 10. Wow. Nice. The movie's fucking awesome. Hell it yeah. is. Hits all the things you want and more. Mmm. Riley? Mmm. Riley. Oh, man. Now I'm wondering if, okay, so I'll Uh-oh. stop it. I'll stop he it. I'll stop it. No, 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 no. No, wait, 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 wait. Just. <laughs> Here's my slogan. My slogan. Um, uh, uh. Although it can't fully escape its 2000s superhero movie heritage, Logan deconstructs its own mythos in a delightfully depressing, yet hopeful, way. I gave it 8.5 out of 10. Okay, good. I like it. It's a great movie. I love it, even. Yep. That's love territory for me is 8.5. Yep. Logan somehow manages to simultaneously be the most gritty and real entry in the X-Men franchise and be the movie where a little girl version of Wolverine goes on a road trip with him. <laughs> <laughs> and somehow it does that. Yeah. 8.5 out of 10. Oh, That's fucking awesome. Wow. This, this movie, it rules. And it's I great. had a memory of it. Like I watched it in the theater and I remember being like, it was good, but there's aspects of it I didn't like, which we'll talk about. Um, those, I was wrong. Uh, it is, having watched like five X-Men movies this week, <laughs> it's the best one. <laughs> Easy, easily. Well, uh, that's, yeah, that's why I said it's like, you know, it's still, it's it's super, super good, especially compared to those. Mm-hmm. But Some like them, compared yeah, to sure. like, it kind of like makes you want to take it more seriously as like a non-X-Men movie. I don't know, man. And when I you s- do that, then you kind of like notice all the little like, oh, that's kind of cheesy, that's kind of whatever. But undoubtedly... Uh, the best X-Men movie. I gave it a lower rating than I gave um, that Multiverse Spider-Man movie. No, no, not the animated one. The um, uh, no, way, no Way Home. No, no way, way Home. home. <laughs> Although, in retrospect, mm. I don't know. I probably like this movie more. I feel like Spider-Man Sometimes has... I watch a movie in the theater and I get really amped on it and I give it a little higher rating yeah, the next day. 100%. Honestly, I... It was I a feel cool like, cultural moment. I think I... Uh, I don't remember what I rated that now. I think I rated it like a nine. Yeah, I did. Higher it than hype. this one. It was hype, for sure. Because it was like, it was an event. Yeah, it was pretty cool. It was very fun, but this this was an event. This is a, a different emotion. Like watching this one, man, when she turns that cross to an oh, X, yeah, that's yeah. A good I was just like, that's kind of cheesy, but uh. yeah, yeah, yeah. no, but it's great because he's he's I, immortal. God damn it! Right, and I I should say when I say there's like cheesy elements, I don't mean that in that in like an entirely negative way. Just that like it kind of confuses the tone i guess i think the cheesy stuff is more relegated to the second half where i'm already really invested in the movie yes. anyway that it doesn't bother me right exactly exactly you know what here's a message from our sponsor vessi <laughs> <It's not laughs> we're, we're getting right into this oh that sinking feeling though he's supposed to be invincible whenever he gets hurt oh god uh do you ever struggle to figure out what you're gonna wear in unpredictable weather vessi shoes are made with a material that they say is 100 waterproof keeping your feet dry in the wettest of weather they're lightweight and easy to pack they're not they are. Their lightweight and easy to pack sneakers offer you reassurance when the snow and rain start coming down. Putting them on and taking them off is super easy. They're slip-ons. I'm wearing them right now. Their shoes are made from cruelty-free products right down to the glue. 
You won't eat our meat, but you glue with our feet. Not these guys. <laughs> Whether it's a rainy city or a rocky trail, the herringbone tread design is there to help you stop from slipping all over the place and accidentally doing the splits. And you're old, and your 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 adductors can't take that. And suddenly, boom, pulled your groin. Your abductors? Adductors. Adductors. My bad. Ab I think those are on the outside of the ab. Anyways, multiple kinds. Treat your feet with Vessi footwear and save twenty five dollars with our offer code Linus Tech Tips at Vessi com slash Linus Tech Tips. There's probably there just movies one, but I couldn't find it this morning. Thanks. To Secret Lab for sponsoring this video. Secret Lab chairs are designed to keep you comfortable for those long nights of work and play and listening to the back catalog of their just movies. Oh. Their Titan Evo 2022 series chair offers four way lumbar support, comes with magnetic memory foam head pillow, and is offered in different upholsteries like hybrid leatherette, soft weave fabric, and Napa leather. The only leather that you can't say without thinking about this podcast. <laughs> Best of all, a five year extended warranty is included along with a 49 day return policy if you're covered. So you're covered if anything goes wrong, so learn more at LMG. Lmg dot um, lmg gg slash secret lab tjm. It's in the game. <laughs> That's it, guys. Let's do this. What happened in this movie? It's been oh, the synopsis. Oh uh, yeah. Well, in 2029, mutants are nearly extinct, and Logan, finally aging due to his failing healing ability, works as a limo driver in El Paso, Texas, just south of the border in Mexico. He and mutant tracker Caliban. Caliban? Caliban. Caliban. That's just Caliban. Caliban. Yeah. Caliban. <laughs> Why are you doing it like that? Caliban. <laughs> Caliban. Care for 90-year-old Xavier, who suffers for Xavier, who suffers from dementia and telepathic seizures. Logan is approached by Gabriella, a former nurse for biotech corporation Alkali Transigen, and he reluctantly agrees to ex escort her and a young girl named Laura to Eden, a supposed mutant refuge close to the Canadian border. Of course. But Gabriella is soon murdered by transigent goon D Donald Pierce, who of tries course. to capture Laura at the Mexican hideout. Instead, he captures Caliban, who he tortures into tracking Logan, Xavier, and Laura after they escape. It's revealed that Laura has powers and claws similar to Logan because she's one of many mutant children bred by transigent to be living weapons. Xavier calls her Logan's daughter. While on the run, Xavier insists they help out a farmer and his family who sub subsequently get slaughtered along with Xavier by a younger clone of Logan X-24. Logan and Laura escape after Caliban and the farmer sacrifice themselves, although the farmer also then tries to kill Logan, but... Uh, we'll talk about that. After ignoring a doctor's advice to do something about his adamantium poisoning, Logan angrily agree decides to drive Laura to Eden to prove to her that it's not actually real. Instead, they find the other transigent children preparing to cross into Canada. When Logan insists they continue on without him despite Laura's objections, she finds and keeps the adamantium bullet Logan has been holding on to in case he decides to kill himself. But once the children leave, transigent forces pursue them, so Logan overdoses on a transigent healing serum and slaughters most of the bad guys with Laura's help. I remember being pumped in the theater when that happened. Father and people daughter. Were amped up. Killing people. But the serum wears off, and Logan is then mauled by X-24 before Laura shoots him with Logan's bullet. She mercy killed her own dad. Yeah, well, sort of. It's more like brother. He killed her, his her own uncle. father, too, so it's... Oh. Near death, Logan tells Laura to not become the weapon she was made to be, and she tearfully acknowledges him as her father. Logan then dies. The children bury him, and Laura tilts the cross grave marker to create an X. Oh, and you're the sinking for feeling. xylophone. You know, <laughs> I think let's start off by talking about tone. Yes. You know what I realized is you can, in microcosm, the design language of the uh, Xavier's wheelchair tells you everything about the tone of whatever X-Men movie you're watching. Oh, interesting. I didn't, th I didn't think you were going to go there, but sure. In this movie, there's a shot. Uh, he falls out of his wheelchair, so the wheelchair was like taking up a half of the frame. I was looking at it. I think I ended up pausing for some reason, and then I was like, "Wait a second, that's kind of interesting." Because in this, his wheelchair is just like this, like shitty, yeah, hand-me-down kind of, you know, put together hodgepodge kind of thing with like a sheepskin seat. It doesn't even have X's on the wheels. No. <laughs> Whereas in other movies, it's like. Uh, uh, clear acrylic plastic or it's floating yeah. or in the uh, Doctor Strange one it's like this giant hover machine yeah. uh, and so it really is like it's in microcosm like the whole look or feel of the movie yeah. in the wheelchair yeah. apparently you can uh, line them up and pick out which movie it is yeah apparently James Mangold fought really hard to be allowed to make the movie R-rated not because he wanted tons of violence but because he wanted the movie not to be targeted towards kids and have a darker tone mm. and also just be a slower pace and I think that really serves the movie to just be like uh, you know, each scene has a little more breathing room and like emotional impacts 
have the time for you to react and, and actually feel them. And yeah. I think it, the movie is really well served by this tone. For I sure. Was gonna, I but, was going to say that this movie is one of the examples of a perfect uh, synergy between wanting to talk about the positive elements of the movie and wanting to start at the beginning of the movie. Because for me, that opening scene is such an amazing tone promise, mm -hmm. to use James's terms. <laughs> Every time uh, you say the tone promise, know, you because, always acknowledge that it's well, my terms. Because I, I, I don't want to say that and just have you be like... <laughs> I taught him that and not have me <laughs> acknowledge it. It's, it has to be said. Anyways, mm. Uh, mm. it's a... What's the opening again? The uh, opening, he's sleeping in the limo. He's sleeping in the limo. He's oh, woken yeah. up by these guys trying to steal his tires and he or his rims it's, or whatever. Yeah. And he's like, you know, tries to... He, he tells them to stop just like gently and then they shoot him and he slaughters them because they won't listen. And but it does, uh, it's horribly brutal and people get stabbed through the jaw and in the brain and it tells you right away, this is a grown-up superhero movie. Yeah. This is not a fun romp. But it also has the details, like the character detail of one of his claws not coming out right. Yeah. So it communicates something's wrong with his abilities. Right. Yeah, the movie's really good at those little details yeah. that communicate story. Yeah, two things on that. If he's going to have some kind of like injury um, that kind of signifies that his losing his abilities, one of his claws being messed up is the perfect right. injury he should have. Because it's his claws are synecdoche that like stand for the whole. Yeah. Right. It's like X3, the cover is just like the three claws. It's, it's like, like having <laughs> a limp dick. <laughs> if you're like a porn star known for your yeah. dick and you walk around with, with no pants dick. on it's all the time. It's a phallic thing that just won't get up. You know? And the okay. second thing is is the violence. It's like playing a Star Wars, like if you got a Star Wars game where you finally could just chop not just robots but humans in half with your mm. lightsaber, you're like, right. yes, this is what I always wanted. <laughs> yeah. Like Wolverine stabbing a guy in the forehead and it's coming out the other side. It's like, fuck yeah. You separate people from their parts. Like it is, I watched a lot of these movies this week. I watched four i watched both wolverine origins and i watched like uh, uh first class and then days of future past and then this i actually even watched the first half hour of apocalypse like i never got through it oh boy um i wanted to i just got interrupted okay. but so having watched them all you kind of see the common denominators right and like you know there's always going to be uh, a time where wolverine goes yeah. and then jumps forward with both claws yeah, both out claws, he jumps yeah. off of something yeah. like there's all these things that are in all of it the and front like, claw pounce the power fantasy that is wolverine is interesting um mm. you know it's he he doesn't get hurt so he can just do he can take these risks and do whatever he wants because he's gonna be okay right and he fucks people up and that is empowering to watch. And he is stoic. He's emotionally complicated. He doesn't want to talk about his problems. And that's relatable. Mm -hmm. It's like, if I could just, I just tell people to fuck off. And I stab them. I do it. <laughs> it's like, it's actually hilarious that yeah. he's like the biggest most popular superhero because it just makes so men so much sense for masculinity well yeah he's always been the edgy x-men like all the other x-men they think of him versus scott summers being so like good guy yeah yeah like clean cut and then there's always the cool <laughs> yeah and wolverine, wolverine deserves to take that guy's girlfriend yeah yeah for real <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? and it's like the first movie i feel like they're finally exploring the 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 real dark version of logan that i think people always wanted and it's fucking exciting. Yeah. It's fucking exciting. And it's I think really cool. what they do what's cool about the power fantasy is they undercut it every, at every turn. It's like you don't really see him, you know, unleash until, you know, the end. And it's with huge consequences, a huge price. Like he takes the serum and he, he like yeah. does the leaps and the, the jumps more than he's done in the rest of the movie. Because most of the fighting's pretty like grounded in terms of like no one's super powered and throwing each other across the room yeah. mostly. Every fight he's like he gets injured. Mm hmm. And only in that last one when he's in like the his prime from the serum or whatever does he just like rip through people with no problems. When he yeah he leaps and he yeah. throws and he he's stronger than he has been. Leaping, I, throwing, he does it all. But I think, <laughs> I think in general the fighting in this movie is fucking awesome. Like yeah, Laura is the Yo! biggest badass ever. Perfect casting. Perfect. Perfect. Casting. They made casting. so many good decisions with her. Like first of all, the decision for her to be. Uh, a Spanish speaker for them to have a language barrier mm -hmm. I think was a huge good choice yeah because she doesn't have any cringe kid lines because mm -hmm. they just don't talk yeah, for most of the time glances and the second thing that's important if you're going to have that resting bitch face yeah for, like she's a kid <laughs> I, I, I can talk about resting bitch face because I haven't so my kids <laughs> it's like funny. she looks like an absolute bitch yeah like well, she, okay. when she stares down these other people she doesn't look like oh look there's a little girl staring me down ha 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 she actually 
I'm like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> that kid looks. That kid wants to fuck me up. That's so funny that you called it resting bitch face because like it's true. But I, what I wrote down is that she looks like a feral child. Like she yeah. looks like part wolf or something. Like watch out, she's gonna rip you apart. She looks something. unhinged. Like yeah. like the gaze that she has. Just like what's that kid gonna do? Is yeah. That kid gonna stab me in the leg with. She yeah. has like a John Connor vibe. Yeah. And it's also perfect. She's perfectly cast because she looks as if a. She looks like a kid who didn't have a childhood. Like. Yeah. She, which is funny because they show them like doing stuff, like having birthday parties and stuff. So they obviously but are I mean, it's somewhat so adjusted. What? Yeah, it's so limited. Like yeah. the nurses were the ones trying to give them that and they get reprimanded and stuff. That's right. Yeah. I thought that was, well, we can talk about that later, but I was just saying, I thought that was a bit of a disconnect with like showing her being so feral and mm-hmm. insane. And then we get to the other kids and they're kind of like. More. We made this nice little commune, and yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll talk about that later. Yeah, that's later. Kind of me. I mean, what do you think about like the when she her claws pop out? Oh my yo. god, that's like a like kind of divisive. Like my wife might be like, okay, I'm out. But I think really? when I saw it in the theater, the people who want to see that movie or whatever, people are just like, yes, yeah, yes! yeah, oh my god. yeah, that's awesome. That whole fight, the way she screams when she fights, is I know. so visceral. Like <laughs> I so feel good. it in my gut. She's like these little like these like cries that feel yeah. so intense and and just savage. It's like animalistic. I mean, like we've said, she was well cast a million times, but like no doubt that she was told to kind of like emulate Logan's uh, or you know Hugh Jackman's yells, which he does a great job of. It's just like guttural and visceral, and she's doing the same thing, but like little girl's version. Why do you think she has three claws? Do you think there's just too many claws for a tiny fist? They explain it, don't they? That it's like, uh, it's like the female gene versus the male gene. So she she has the two front ones and the three back like feet ones, right? Uh, and so because like the lion, has yeah. But the, why do you think as filmmakers, why do they choose to? Is that a comic thing? What's well, from the comic? Or did it just look weird? Where they're like, there's just not enough room on that tiny fist for three claws. I mean, I, I imagine that they probably. Uh, made the, the comic design like that for the reason that Xavier says in the film. Otherwise, that would be kind of a weird thing to just like come up with for this one. Mm-hmm. But uh, I also want to shout out that moment though, where he explains that she has feet claws, but you don't know it until the final fight, and then all of a sudden she's Wait, like, what are you no, 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 you see him before that. Oh, really? Yeah, she uses oh, yeah. him in the first fight. Oh, I don't remember that. Yeah, she's getting dragged away, and she just like it comes out. Oh, and she you're kicks right. The guy you're in right. The neck. Yeah. yeah, such a yeah, such a great reveal where the guys go in and you just hear them like. Ah! She comes out with a severed head. And you then, don't like, even know slow. that it's a severed head first. You're just yeah. like, what is it? And I she d- just rolls it that out. That was great. Yeah, um, totally. Oh, but all the flips too, like the stunt person that does yeah. all the action in that fight is so intense. Like, I, there's Another a lot of 11 those, year old. Like, you know, black in like Black Widow movies, there's a, like a similar fighting style where they jump and they do like the flip around and then they launch them. Yeah. But it's so much more intense in this movie. They just shoot the fight scenes so well. Like they, they change the angles and do the right cuts. It's so. You know what I actually wrote down? I was like, whoever made Obi-Wan. Never saw this movie. <laughs> Remember in those first episodes, like every chase with Leia yeah. was so brutal. This kid's even smaller. Yeah. But although you, she does get the kind of like, um, you give her some grace because you know she's like 80 pounds heavier for that adamantium. That's fair. So they actually even show that the part where she's, remember when Wolf, uh, Logan's trying to grab her backpack oh, and yeah. she's like fighting with it? She slams her hand on the table to pin down the backpack and the whole table like shakes. Oh, so yeah. that's kind of like, that's before it's revealed that yep. she has the adamantium. So it kind of uh, serves to build that up. Mm. That's clever. Um, apparently... I don't know. I just on a couple of Reddit posts I've seen uh, the the foot claw thing is not for any real scientific reason or anything. It's just to have like it her be a little different. Yeah, it's visually more interesting to have her have two claws instead of three. It's much better than the whatever the one from the is it X two where she has the fingernails. That's oh, that's 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 right. I hate that. That's a real real character though. I know, but I, I know, hate but it. Sabretooth has it too. And X Men Origins, that's it's so cheesy, especially for Saber like Sabretooth. There's a shot of him in that movie where he like. He's in a World War II trench or World War One trench, and he like jumps out and he like scratches this guy in the face, and it just looks like why don't you just punch him in the face, man? It, like, it just yeah. like just looks wrong. What do you think about like the yeah, leverage? If you're super strong, you might as well. But your fingers are so much less strong than your exactly. arms. Exactly, exactly. So much more. That's force. why the, that's why the idea that they would put the adamantium claws in your fingers makes no sense. Yeah, because it's like they're just gonna you're, you're you gonna, would just tape your fingers up, you're gonna snap those off. You would just tape. Your also, how up. do they go in? Like, does she, are they in her forearm and then they have to come all the way out? I don't know, dude. Doesn't make any sense. Actually, you can see that. X-ray imagery of Deathstrike in X-Men too. There, oh, there's okay. a. I'm pretty sure that's a in the background at some point. It must be in her forearms. This is what I really wanted to talk about. Well, that's on this what I was podcast. thinking about <laughs> with, with the with X twenty three with the girl Laura. <laughs> yeah. With them coming out where they do, I'm like, that just seems weaker. Like the middle one is really kind of the anchor for the rest. I feel like 
I don't know. I think if your whole arm is reinforced with adamantium, yeah. it's not as big of a deal. You so, know what is stupid? Also in that Wolverine, X-Men Origins Wolverine with Deadpool, and he has like the swords that come oh out of his arms. God. The <laughs> fucking swords are longer than his forearms. Yeah. How does that work? Are they telescoping? It's, How yeah. does any of this stuff work? I turned off that movie. I was I When you said that you were watching a bunch, I was like, I'm going to watch a bunch. And I... Did X Men X two and then I was like I'll do Wolverine or Origin I haven't watched it since theaters I turned it off it, it sucks. sucks it's so it's bad. the yeah. worst one it that, sucks the Wolverine was okay mm. you know what else sucks about um, yeah the Wolverine I actually think it was cool yeah. it's the same director as this one ah uh, that movie's pretty good yeah. um, X Men Origins Wolverine sucks. it's super cringe I mean it must have sucked for them to basically just do another Wolverine origin story well no the Wolverine <laughs> isn't really this time. isn't really an origin well it's like early Wolverine yeah. It's after the events of a lot of these movies. What? The Wolverine? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. That's like sci-fi-y, was... isn't it? Like the, there's like a bullet train and shit. It's modern day. Yeah. It's oh. a, yeah, yeah. It's not in the past. Oh, I never saw it. So yeah. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Um, but in X-Men Origins Wolverine, it's super cringe because like they just do fucking shit. Like, like Sabretooth runs around like a lion, like on all <laughs> fours, all like bounding and pouncing. And he looks super weightless. Yeah. And then what really does it dirty though is to me, um, throughout all the movies, Wolverine's background and his origin is like the source of so much trauma and pain mm. right like you can't look into his mind and you just see these flashes of him in a tank striker yeah, and yeah. he's getting fucked on and used by the military to do like heinous cr like war crimes yep. and he's you know getting exploited that way and then you see that x-men origins wolverine story spoiler for that movie don't watch it anyway um in that movie he he kind of gets tricked into like volunteering to get the metal put on him and then he doesn't get memories implanted at that time. He doesn't get his memory erased at that time. He gets his memory erased by just getting shot in the head by an anime bullet stupid. later on. But it's just kind of like, wait, wait, wait. So they they didn't actually make you do any atrocities. <laughs> like he goes to this, he goes on this one mission and then he leaves when he doesn't want to do a thing. That the, So he just walks away. So he, yeah. he doesn't have any trauma yeah. compared to like what was sold in the other movies. So it kind of undercuts the rest 100%. of his whole arc. Well, they, didn't, they couldn't commit to him being actually dark they just wanted you know superficial exactly trauma. whereas in logan this movie they hint at that shit when uh you know he says you know you've killed people or she says i've hurt people too and he and then but eventually she says but they were bad people yep. and he goes all the same yeah, yeah. you're gonna have to deal with that and live with that That's all one the of my same favorite yeah. lines in the whole movie that is great i like too that they give charles trauma <laughs> like i i hate the way they portray Charles at the beginning because it hurts so much to yeah. watch. But fuck, the journey he takes you on is fucking fantastic. Right. Well, this is interesting because I, I alluded in my slogan that when I first watched this movie, there were things I hated about it and it was the Charles portrayal. Mm. I was like, Patrick Stewart, like, what are you doing? Like, it just doesn't seem like the Xavier we've seen. But now watching the context of I watched First Class and all those oh, ones yeah, yeah. this week and the James McAvoy portrayal of Charles, young Charles, is actually not very far. I think it's pretty aligned with the dementia Charles we see in Logan. Yeah. <laughs> Having just watched the McAvoy one where he's younger and... Wait, he takes the serum that gives allows him to walk but takes away his powers and it's like yeah. kind of a, a analog for heroin. Right. Yeah, there's that aspect of it, but also just like... Just his behavior and mm. I don't know, just how he is. He's, he's less gravitas. Than he's the, a bit than more the old, yeah, the bald one. He's right? more headstrong. He's like cracking jokes and stuff. He's like, yeah, he, he's less like I'm calm, serene. Sometimes he has those moments, the James McAvoy yeah. X, but but he also is like, I'm gonna punch you in the face, Eric. Yeah. Yeah. So with those with those elements, tying them into the the. Uh, Professor X we see in this movie, it, it totally worked for me and I removed that criticism and that's what made me like the movie a lot more. Yeah. Yeah. I, as you say, it hurts to see Professor X uh, reduced to this, but at the same time, I like this movie is really good at this. It presents you, it gives you something like morbid and depressing and and uh, just, just really sad, but also it kind of like shocks you into... Uh, confronting this horrible reality because it's like the fact is people age and the fact is people die and they get murdered by horrible people and and so like it, as a deconstruction of this like superhero type of movie where you know people get defeated but maybe they don't die or maybe like the big bad guy dies but everyone else kind of survives and like oh people get like that no one you don't really see people like get brutally killed in superhero movies Not where usually. we see that all the time and to tie that back to X uh, it, his depiction as like a v really irritating yet also like 
heartwarming and like he's the soul of the party like that depiction of him is just so perfect because as you know anyone who can who has taken care of senior citizens who are like infirm can attest you love them and so you want to keep taking care of them but at at times you also want to just kill them already because they're so irritating like some of the shots where like he's like just take the pills take the pills they're in the car and he takes the pills and He's like, show me, and he's like, nah. (laughs) Like, they have, like, I love the kind of, like, antagonistic back and forth, not antagonistic, but you know what I mean, Uh, between him and Logan, it's... it's, Well, and and I think they do a really good job, because I think one of the ideas of this movie is, like, you need a purpose, and, like, they've been without purpose just trying to survive for so long, so they've kind of lost what made them super, in a sense, like, if we can make it cheesy, and Because he killed them. Well, yeah. (laughs) But I, I think Charles, you start to see... Charles Xavier, Professor X, when Laura shows up and he's like, he has purpose and he like rolls mm, out. Yeah, yeah, and he's yeah. like, he's more, he's more with it. He's more like, he's he's more present. And you're like, oh, there's Professor Because there's X. this dynamic throughout the movie of Wolverine being like, or Logan being like, okay, you are breaking down and you need my help. Let's just take your pills and shut up. And then you, it's like, he's, he's too used to Xavier being... Um, not all there and he forgets that there's moments where he is very much still all there right, right. he doesn't understand the the balance there yeah. Be- like there's a line from Xavier where he says I always know who you, who you are I don't just don't always recognize you yeah. so he, Logan just doesn't understand how it comes in and out and so he can't trust him when he says oh yeah I'm sure you've been talking to another mutant yeah there's no mutants yeah yeah yeah, yeah. sure buddy I- Cerebro isn't up and running okay <laughs> I really like to just the setup of it. I think it's very sweet of Logan to be taking care of Professor X because mm. like, you know, uh, in the previous movies, you'd imagine, you know, like it's a storm or a, like, like Logan's always been on his own doing his own thing. But like Logan has so much love for Professor X that he's willing yeah. to put up with all this bullshit. And like just him being there present, wanting to take him on the boat, take care of him. I'm like, that's really sweet in a beginning of the movie. That's so dark. I right. think that really... I could, that isn't a departure of his character to me at all. Mm-hmm. He seems like the kind of guy who, like, you know, you'd be like, why are you doing all this for this asshole? And you'd be like, that asshole was there back at Nam. <laughs> and, like, you don't even know. Yeah, no, that's fair. That's He's, fair. He seems like a loyal person. Yeah. I, I love also that uh, Logan is, he, we, we are reminded in this movie that Xavier kind of like, humanized or domesticated uh, Logan to a certain extent. Like, he's like, when I found you, you were a cage fighter. Well, and that's like, actually his arc in at least probably multiple of the movies is like, is he every man? Every movie. Is he man or animal is what he yeah. is like directly struggling yeah. with. Well, it. that's, yeah, that's what makes him Wolverine is the fact that, he, you know, outside of any structure or purpose that is given to him, if, if that was, if that's not there, he kind of becomes this just like animalistic, selfish, uh, you know, and amoral uh, being that's just kind of like going around doing his own thing. Not even that. He actually beca- he has a propensity to become feral more than other normal people. Right. Right. Exactly. And that, so so uh, I love that they they don't start from because this is like we've already seen all the X Men movies. So they start from a position of they kind of remind us that that was his journey mm-hmm. before, and it's kind of like. This is why it's so uh, powerful to me as a as a reflection on like aging and uh, you know maintaining some sense of purpose or like meaning in life because as you get older you know you've seen it all before uh, pe- you've seen people die especially he has he's like three hundred years old or something and so it's like it's so easy 1830s. to become nihilistic right it's so easy to become nihilistic and be like, ah, nothing really matters because I've seen it all and everything goes to shit eventually. Mm -hmm. And so that arc of Logan, once again, going from uh, not believing in something to believing in something uh, is, is, is great to see in in like a slightly different context. Super nihilistic in this movie, right? Like I'm going to take you to Eden just because, even though it's fake, just to show you it's fake, just so I have nothing else to do and I'm going to die anyway. Fuck it. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, like you were saying, like when once they have the purpose of we have to take Laura, that breathes life into Xavier and it eventually breathes life into Logan as he dies, which is, you know, which is appropriate, I feel like. I think, though, like earlier on in the movie, you can start to see that he's willing to make sacrifices for her. And he's like, he's coming along. We're doing the oscillating of like, yeah, he's I mean, being yeah. good. He's being back. as his, well, so. He's also driven before he gets attached to her. He's driven by his trauma as well, because mm. originally he's saying 
shut up, Xavier. You're not. There's no mutants. You're not talking to any of them. And then when she shows up and he sees her powers, he says, what are you? And that pisses him off. Because that's where you... It's almost foreshadowing. As soon as he said that, I was like, she's not a quote-unquote real mutant. He's right. There are no mutants. She's made in a way that he was made. And fuck that. Yeah. <laughs> that that's enough for him to want to learn more. Yeah. I love it. Uh, what do you think about the at the end when... Uh, they do get closer, and then she says, Daddy. Oh, my gosh. Do you think that was a little on the nose, a little cringe, or was it, like, I, a powerful? I, I thought it was a little on the nose, but at the same time, it immediately made me start crying. Oh. So, so uh, well, you know, what, what can you do? <laughs> there you go. I think that, like, she thought of him as her father before then, but I think that, like, they managed to kind of, like, Xavier tells him that she's his daughter, but she doesn't really acknowledge him as her dad and he doesn't acknowledge her as his daughter so like having that moment right at the end where they do acknowledge how important they are to each other uh it just like it takes something that was under the surface and just like puts it in front of you if in there the was best like way. another hour to this movie it yeah. probably would have been more impactful oh to, really to it seem- didn't get you no i think it was i'm just saying it'd be enhanced because we don't get that much time of, of them bonding and having tribulations and stuff like that they, we, we don't but at the same time yeah, we like, get some but. we get the bonding that two wolverines would do which is like fighting and arguing with each other and like okay we're gonna help each other survive but we're not gonna be happy about it and like to me that is like that's the bonding that they would do they wouldn't like go fishing and be like hey i love you one shot that really <laughs> helps earn that moment and it's like almost like a throwaway shot but i feel like it's one of the most important shots for her is when they're at the dinner table in that farmhouse mm. there's a part where um logan like cracks a joke and like things start loosening up and they like the whole family is like laughing they're having this wholesome dinner they're having a normal dinner yeah. and people are relaxed and no one's angry and no one's gonna kill anybody and then they all laugh and the final shot before it cuts to the next scene is a shot of her and she's smiling and looking around mm, at people and laughing yeah. and especially if she doesn't really speak english english you're like you don't even know what they're saying or like why they're laughing really and she's still smiling and laughing along. Kids often just like imitate or whatever, but it's just a glimpse of it's like, look, like she wants, she's a rescue dog and she just wants to be in a normal family. And yeah. like, look how it, it like makes her heart sore to just be in this kind of context and yeah. she, that normalcy. And she wants that. So later on in the movie where she like, you know, sees him as a dad, another thing she never had that she wishes mm. she had, then that really hits home. It's stronger because of that earlier shot. Let's talk about that sequence because I think it's a hard sequence to watch when you know what's going to happen. When they invite him to the house and they do the dinner, oh my god, so nice, yeah, and it's so great, and like even Logan helping the uh, the father, you know, defend the the water pipe and stuff, and you're like, nice, smash him in the face, yeah. like, fuck these guys, you hate you hate them. But then when you know what's going to happen, there's just this awful sense of dread, and it's so weird. It, it might be telling of me. I feel like more than the family dying. I was more worried about them knowing that it wasn't Logan that killed them, that it was like a different creature. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, I don't Interesting. Know why. I, see, I've seen this movie before. But justice. I compl- That's a sense of justice, right? You yeah. don't want to think that this, like yeah. you died in a perverse way, like this guy who just helped, I thought yeah, was normal, exactly. killed me. Yeah, yeah, I mean, we didn't, I guess we didn't see, I didn't see the family members like seeing that it was Logan and like being like, wait, I thought you were a friend. Blah, blah. Like it just like, it doesn't show him. It I guess it shows him stabbing the kid, but like through a video monitor, I think. And then it doesn't. It we just see the dead mom. Yeah. And then the the guy just gets knocked down the stairs. So to me, it didn't hurt as much. Like because it the wasn't movie, explicit. The movie's not focused on it. The movie is yeah. focused on Wolf, Logan making sure that Xavier knows that it wasn't him. Yeah. Yes. And that matters. Yes. Because those that, are the main characters. That was a good moment yeah. for if, for my own personal when the kid, the teenager Nate was lying on the ground. His mom was down the hallway going, Nate. Oh my God. That's when I was like, Oh, no, that whole sorry, God. yeah. Can you I imagine should, like your son just like I should clarify that whole scene was absolutely horrifying because I had seen the movie before, but I completely forgot that the family dies. So then when them. they <laughs> when they're like, Hey, you want to come for a meal or whatever? I'm like, this is the worst thing you could do when an entire like army is like chasing you and trying to kill you. But they, they That's do why it. Logan doesn't want to do it. And I'm like, well, because, but, but it's con- it's a conflicted feeling because you know that Xavier is serving as the soul here and this, like, 
moment of humanization is important for Logan to get back on the path mm -hmm. of like finding purpose and like doing the right thing. And so while you know that this is good, that they're having a meal with this family and having a, like a moment where they're just like, Hey, we're not running for our lives for a second. At the same time, you're like, you should be because you're, bringing down horrible consequences on this family that had nothing yeah. to do with it. Well, it's such an interesting thing because I feel like Xavier would have, if he knew <clears throat> that he was going to die, I think he would have done the same thing. If he could have like, if he could have had the dinner and die in that place, it would have been fine. But the, at the cost of the family, I think it's interesting that the movie sort of agrees with Logan's cynicism. And yeah. like that, that's like the purpose of it is like, right. he's kind of right. Like you can't, you can't find attachments. Right. But at the same time, like that's the happiest Charles has been. And like, that's the most, Charles has been Charles for God knows how long. That's the happiest he's been, and it is very cynical, but at the same time, I feel like the movie, this is what makes this movie so strong for me, is the fact that it depicts a, a cynical reality. It depicts a horrible, horrible world, and then says, what do you do? Do you accept that and just like be horrible yourself, or do you say, no, we can make it better? And I think the movie... As depressing and dark as it is, it ends on a hopeful note, and it the message is that you don't accept that cynicism. You don't say, "Hey, everyone's gonna die, so I might as well kill you now." Yeah, you know, you don't say that. And then, well, that's Charles through and through. Yeah, and that's what he says to Wolverine too. Like, you wandered out of the wilderness and came to my school, mm. and I helped you, and you're gonna do that for that little girl now. Why are you denying that for that little girl? This is the greatest impact you can. This is the greatest thing you can do on this planet. Right. 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 I feel like of the three different Charles Xavier deaths in the movie, this is the best one. But the way he like in the, in the franchise, in the franchise, there's him getting vaporized by Dark Phoenix. Yeah, was, yeah. there's it's Doctor Strange, which I felt underwhelmed by because it's like, oh, what happens in that? How does he die? Like, somebody uh, lands on him? No, she reaches in. He's like in the dream realm trying to talk to Wanda, and then Scarlet Witch pops up behind him and does the <laughs> neck break. That's <laughs> fucking audacious. Hey, uh, that's all yeah. awesome. So awesome that they put that in that movie. But then this one, it's so sad, and even just like at the end where he's like like. You can can't really understand what he's saying. He's saying like the sun chaser, whatever. Sun, and then yeah, he's yeah, yeah. Like, sun seeker. Sun it's seeker, so sad. And then just goes away, and you're like, oh, I, I, I wrote down after that happened. I'm just like, okay, there are a number of things that like that that is that has happened in this movie that are just like rough. There are just some rough moments. Like the the family just gets murdered along with Xavier, um, and then he dies. Like you say, not saying Logan, go. I give you a mission. I believe in like, you. Like there's yeah. meaning. Blah, blah blah. He just says boat. The sun suits the yacht we want. Well, he's. I think he's telling him like, go and live that life, go and I, get your freedom on that boat. I mean, maybe, but I think that the the freedom on the boat thing was always kind of like a pipe dream. It never really seemed realistic to me. Like, okay, you're gonna buy a boat and then you're gonna go out in the ocean and what? Like, that's yeah. your life now? Yeah. I don't know. It just seemed. It seemed Dude, like yeah, for sure. Logan has had very meager and humble lives in his sure, life sure. Like he's been a he's been a logger out I just in northern that, alberta like, it never really seemed like a final good option it was just kind of like it seemed like an unrealistic pipe dream and then we kind of we see him on the phone trying to barter the price down because yeah. he doesn't actually have the money so, yeah. to pay it, for it so kind of interesting when you compare it to the pipe dream that laura <laughs> has and how he's like able to see how bullshit hers is yeah and but his own like he's not willing to accept <laughs> yeah. the reality great. Of it. that's great irony yeah. I like when Wolverine comes up against the finances. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great theme when they bring it up. Um, and then the other dark thing was the the farmer, Will. Uh, like, X-24 is about to kill Logan, and the car crashes into him and saves him. But he gets out, the oh. farmer gets out and, and shoots X X-24 in the head, and then he turns around, and you're kind of like, is no. he going to have a Is he going to save him? But it's like, it's dark. He tries to kill Logan. Well, he doesn't know which one's which necessarily. Sure. I just mean that like, I read it both. I, I read it as, I didn't even read it like he yeah, doesn't he know which him. one is which. I think he's like, you just killed my family. Yeah, like, it doesn't matter if you directly killed them. You brought this on us. And it's very Shakespearean. Yeah. yeah. And then he, as soon as he knows that his purpose of revenge is down, he's, yeah. he's like, I'm dead. The only way he, the only reason that he didn't shoot is because he was out of ammo. Yeah. You know, so. It's dark. Um, but I will say, I love... I love it when movies turn a villain that you hate into kind of someone you're cheering for for a second. 
like when X24 goes and kills everyone and then has Lauren and then all the assholes show up, like the big posse. And yeah, you're like, you guys are fucked. Yeah, you're like, all right, <laughs> yeah. all right. 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 You're, at the end of the day, you're just watching Wolverine. So you're like, yeah, exactly. yeah. get him. That was something that maybe made me feel a bit, okay, that sounds horrible. But like made me made like made me feel a tiny little bit better about the family dying because I'm like maybe they were gonna be fucked up by this corporation anyways. Okay, it's not it's not okay. But I just mean <laughs> that the fact that they had this like force that was already oppressing them mm-hmm. and like probably going to ruin their lives eventually if they kept pushing back. Um, I think it was like a reinforcement that this world sucks. While at the same time. Uh, like it's obviously a horrible thing and you should feel bad about it mm. but at the same time there's a feeling that like but they were going to be fucked anyway you know what's uh, another depressing thing in this movie uh let's talk about the world building for a bit mm. they do some very slight but awesome world building mm. um where he's listening to the radio and there and there's like a, a alex jones type kind of or rush limbaugh type person yeah listing off all the ailments in america I forget what he says, but... It, Water's yeah. turning the mutants gay! <laughs> like, he's saying stuff like that, like, the food quality's bad. That's why they died. <laughs> There's all this, this, and this, and mutants, and it's all connected. Yeah. Um, and one of the people on the radio says, it's 2029, why are we still talking about mutants? Mm. And I think that line is so cool in the context of all the rest of the movies, because the early, the other ones that take place in the 60s, 70s, 80s, yeah. it's like, whoa, we just discovered mutants exist, and we need to figure out how... how humanity is going to grapple with that and figure it out and either be at war with them or live harmoniously. And then like, we'll have it figured out. And then it's like, no, this is like 50 years later. It's still a problem. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that is yeah. really bleak. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's still, but I think that's also, he's also saying, why are we still talking about mutants? Because there's hardly any mutants anymore. That's uh, part of it. Yeah. Because as they say, I didn't fit this in the synopsis because it felt extraneous, but uh, like the, What's his name? Price or Rice? Uh, uh, Xander Rice. Well, Xander Rice, which I didn't even mention, but like he's like the 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 researcher guy at Transigen, and they put stuff in the food. They genetically modified food so that mutants would stop being born. It like fixed the genetic code in that way, and now then they're trying to create their own mutants. So there have been no mutants born for twenty five years, according so to. So that's the, the other thing that they build up, and that actually the fact that they put that in. I have a few things to say on this. Um, number one, this if watching Days of Future Past, I was like, whoa, this is really like Terminator 2 meets oh, X-Men. Yeah, yeah. And then I watched this movie, and I'm like, oh, this is Children of Men meets X-Men. <laughs> right. Um, the second thing is, the thing with Xander Rice is before you, it's revealed that he's the one who's wiped out mutants, earlier in the movie, uh, around this time, you're kind of like, you know, they set it up in the previous ones that maybe it was the nuclear age that was the impetus for so many mutants to emerge now. Mm. And then, you know, it's going to be like this for all time going forward. This is evolution. That's Magneto's whole thing. Like we're here. Right. We're not going to stop being here. Yeah, this we, is the new wave. We're the next humans. But in this movie, it's kind of like, well, maybe it was a blip. Maybe right, there's just right. a 30 year period where there's mutants and then it goes away. Mm. Well, I think the implication is that if you stop feeding people GMO food, then mutants will come back. But, because they well yeah. i mean they eventually they reveal the character of rice and he wiped them all out plus even oh, earlier saying the movie, you like consider that maybe it's a I, yeah, yeah, yeah like maybe yeah. that's an option although you, the apocalypse movie has already happened and in that movie they talk about this mutant who's like eight thousand years ago so like mutants already exist so is okay, right. what let's talk about continuity for a second yeah uh is this is like kind of standalone but it sort of takes place in some of the other movies i think the deal is like there is the movies that take place before days of future past and they're on a timeline Mm -hmm. and then there's the movies when days of future past happens and the sequels that come out after that they're on the revised timeline Uh, so like the dark phoenix movie and the yeah and the apocalypse Apocalypse movie like boo again (laughs) not quite as bad those are all on the revised timeline and then this movie is actually kind of on both like it has elements of both there's things in this movie that are like well that is because of the pre- yep. that timeline and that is because of that timeline. So it's kind of its own thing. I just want to take a second and shout out how sick Days of Future Past is. It's great. It's an awesome movie. It's I, Other than Logan, is my by far my favorite X-Men movie because it's bold and weird and it gives you like both timelines and it gives you everything you want out of an X-Men movie. And it's dark, that opening scene when the Sentinels are attacking like the group of X-Men, kill them all. And you're like, what yeah. the fuck? You yeah. see Iceman just get like engulfed in flames <laughs> and shit. It's fucked up. Yeah. Oh, okay. And uh, that movie is is uh I found a canon timeline. Oh. So right. first class is kind of canonically like the first movie. Yes. And then we go to what is this? X-Men Origins Wolverine, X-Men, yeah. X2, 
X-Men 3, The Wolverine, and then X-Men Days of Future Past. And you could also... Be, but because X-Men Days of Future Past like resets the timeline, it's like the original movies never happened once Days of Future Past occurs. Yeah. And then there's Apocalypse, Dark Phoenix, The New Mutants. The New Mutants oh, is they, wacky. They don't know where to put that. Oh. That they Whoa, okay. That movie's wacky. Deadpool, Deadpool 2, and then Logan. So I guess Logan is the canonical end to the to the X-Men movie franchise, I guess? That's interesting. I don't have it in front of me. I was reading an article last night that explained why that's not... I don't think that's it's actually not the true. case. There's a couple uh, continuity errors. Well, yeah. well, there's continuity errors throughout because they didn't plan this. Like, for example, Emma Frost is in uh, X-Men Origins Wolverine as she's just like a side character. It's like uh, Wolverine's girlfriend is the sister of Emma Frost. And so even though that movie takes place <clears throat> after uh, First Class... Emma Frost is like a teenager in the background, but in X-Men First Class, she's a strong character who's a full-on adult mm-hmm. yeah. doing espionage. A so voluptuous it's just, adult. They did not plan for this yeah. shit at all. The thing that's cool about um, Days of Future Past is like they did a great job merging the two franchises yes. together. Like just... That was, and it was an achievement. Like, that yeah. could have been a mess. Totally. Well, it's like not a multiverse movie, but it's kind of the first multiverse mainstream right. movie where it's like... You're bringing all these characters you love from two different things. It's oh, a two crossing. timeline crossover kind of so thing. Good. Crossing the streams. Yeah. Um, yeah. I wrote down like when I when I started watching the movie, I was like, wait, this is not canon, right? Because like, there's the Days of Future Past, but it's funny. I looked up the the dates. Days of Future Past is supposed to take place in 2023, <laughs> <laughs> and there's like because that came out in 2014, 14, yeah, which is like it's still pretty short. That was that was dumb of them to set it then, but I guess they had to have these characters there and not have them like super super old. Um, so that was twenty twenty three, and this one takes place in twenty twenty nine. And the difference in like technological development is uh, very obvious. What's well, interesting, I think you could write a good little comic book explanation for why things go so bad. Because end of days, the future past, it resets the timeline, and it's like this sickly sweet. And then he wakes up and everyone's still alive. And it's like, wow, everyone, this is great. We're so happy. But then yeah. it actually kind of goes to an even darker version. What do you mean the technological progress between... Like in Days of Future Past, they have basically like Hover spaceships ships. and crazy... The Sentinel technology is like... Yeah, but... Like, it should be like the year 3000, not 2023. Compared to what we see in Logan... In Logan, in, in Logan is just kind of like near future from yeah, where he, we are. He's like right an now. Uber driver. Yeah. They have autonomous semi trucks that aren't made by Tesla. Yeah, yeah. Um, that was kind of funny. Yes, yeah, so, damn auto that's trucks. That's realistic. But although the, the difference is with the Sentinels, they were made with by incorporating Mystique's DNA into the robotics program. So Which I can is, see it going that way. And then once you have really badass AI, then they can make spaceships and shit. I don't know. It's po- it's possible. I always hated that though, because she doesn't get their power; she just gets the appearance of them. Right? I know. I like, thought that was like a cop out. We reverse engineered. Her it really should be about Rogue. Yeah. If that's the way yes. It's gonna be. But I guess because Jennifer what? Lawrence was the biggest actor in the maybe what? not the biggest, but she was a huge star. What happened to Rogue? Why did she like disappear timeline. from the from the what the timeline? She's yeah, in X three, isn't she? Is she in X three? Yeah, in X three, she decides to take the cure. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, dang! Sad, but yeah. I'm still surprised they never brought her back. She was like kind of the uh, one of the one of the grounding pieces of those original movies. Yeah, I'm glad they didn't bring back Bobby. Don't like that guy. He's boring. He's back in Days of Future Past. Nice man. Yeah, but he he gets killed. He does. Like, oh, actually, I think one of the worst things about some of the movies well, they all get killed. Like in The Last Stand and Apocalypse, which are bad. One of the weaknesses is bringing in mutants who are lame. Yeah. Or not cool yeah. to bring in like oh like guy who's a spiky hedgehog looking guy like <laughs> yeah. what the fuck like is frog. that yeah. like it, but yeah, I totally, 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 honestly yeah. that's something that I've always appreciated about the X Men movies over other superhero movies where you can have people with like weird powers that you would not think of and it's like and it makes sense because you know they're 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 mutations and it's not meant to be glamorous one thing that I haven't they they depict they depict this sometimes in the movie and Caliban is a great example of this where uh, there are lots of mutants. There are more mutants in the X-Men universe with shitty mutations than there are with, like, superhero-level mutations. Mm -hmm. And, like, Caliban's, like, Burning in the Sun is one of those. I remember seeing a comic, too, where one guy's mutation is just that he, like, looks like a big gross frog, and that's it. He can't do anything else. There's, uh, like, another person with, like, a debilitating disability that just, like, makes their life worse. And so... I like when they, because it's like it. I like the depiction of the mutation as like it's a double-edged sword. Yeah, you could get a good card, you get a shitty card. 
Yep. And like for the people who get good cards, it's like sweet. I'm a superhero. Like Gambit. Oh, if yeah. You're, yeah. If you're gonna be all the way, oh, nice. Get I it? like that. I get that. If you're gonna be a mutant, yeah, you might as well. Hopefully, you have a b above average superpower. Yeah. I like. You kind of gloss over Caliban. I think they do a really good job with like making it make me feel sorry for him, not mad at him. Often, like that betrayer storyline, you're like, ah, oh, come on, man, you could have withstood it, but you're like, he did the best he could. You get the sense that he really was trying to delay and do as much as yeah. he could, but he needed to survive. And when he like throws the grenades, I was like, this is a good death. Yeah, he was right. a, good a good character. Good that was good. I, I loved Stephen Merchant in Love this. Stephen I feel Merchant. like what else is that guy in oh, Portal he... Two. What? He's the voice of uh, Weasley in Portal Two. Oh wow! Yeah, I I remember that now. He's been, he's he's live action. He's done a lot of yeah. live action uh, stuff as well. He's like a oh buddy. Jojo Rabbit. He's buddies with uh, Rick Gervais, and so he was. He's done he's done a ton of stuff. Yeah, I like uh, when the... he shows up. It's always a delight though, because especially in this one, next to like Wolverine being like I'm so gruff or whatever, and he's just kind of like Logan. Um, uh, you have to think about these things and he like smashes his mug away he's like that was my favorite mug yeah he's so <laughs> non-confrontational it's like yeah. I hope it's not nagging if I bring up again this fact yeah, like the dosage yeah yeah, yeah. It, it, he's like just trying to be roommates with fucking the Wolverine <laughs> yeah like, god damn it and I, I love how like tall he is too I think he's like six foot six or something yeah and so, like he and Hugh Jackman isn't. He's, he's six two or three. Yeah, he's, is he? Yes. He's pretty tall. Oh, so even next to him, I thought he was like shorter. But even next to no, him, no, Wolverine it's like, is short. But so they oh, always do these yeah, forced perspective things right. to make him look shorter. Oh, interesting. That's like the opposite of what they have to do normally with Hollywood leading men. Kind of speaking of comic book accuracy in terms of height, what do you guys think of the shaving him to look like comic book? Logan, or like when the kid's got his like, hair, yeah, and or, he's like his hag is very vaguely like in the shape of the Wolverine. Yeah, I think uh, my wife's like that looks so cheesy. Like all these movies, uh, it just cuts to him and just gave him this stupid haircut. It's, I don't I, know. When I was a kid, I thought that's awesome. Looks looks perfect, yeah. and I, I'm really into you looking like the the character. Although, does his hair? Yeah, his hair looks like that. In the, yeah, in the yeah, he's kind of like the. It's not just oh, yeah, it it's not just his suit. It's yeah. his hair too. I always thought the hair thing was kind of dumb that they like shape the hair into horns. It's like no one's hair does that naturally. Yeah, that's like, not true. Okay. That's, there was a guy I went to college with. I I called him Wolverine because his hair was like that. Sure, naturally. I don't know. It just always seemed a little goofy to me that like I know that in the comics his hair kind of does that too. But it's like I just thought it was goofy that like. To me, it seemed like they were doing it to make him seem like he's wearing his comic book costume when he's not. But when in the like, if you watch the '90s cartoon, his hair looks like that when he's in plain clothes. I know, but I thought that was dumb too. It's funny. I didn't think the hair bothered me as much as the mustache. I think the mustache is like always there, and it kind mustache? of mustache. Well, they or like, like the lack the of mustache, the chops, the mutton chops. Oh, okay. Uh, and I'm I, like, I, I thought mustache. I want to see it when X24 shows up with them. I'm like. Eh, this is a little stupid, but okay, fine, sure. Yeah, like they when, they yeah. gave him the mutton chops. Yeah, and then I'm I don't know. It sucks. Like the final confrontation, usually in a superhero movie, they have the coolest outfit. Like that's when they're like you know powered up or whatever. And I don't want that in Logan. But having him be kind of silly mutton chopped, I don't know. It undercuts it a little bit. Hmm. Yeah, all those scissors. Kids, like, how do those kids have so many pairs of scissors? I can yeah, never find a pair of scissors. scissors? I, and then I thought, you know what? Little medical kits. They maybe they have like uh, six yeah. or seven medical kits. Uh, maybe. Yeah. yeah, they kinda look like more medical. I think I like I, I liked the I liked the moment of like Ooh, the adult is sleeping and let's be silly kids and like cut his it's hair. Cute. It was cute, you know, it was charming. But then I'm um, at the same time as 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 you're realizing that you're also realizing that oh this is happening so that there can be some member berries and fan service for mm -hmm. like and we gave him the old haircut like, yeah, yeah yeah and he and he's just like inexplicably taking off his like shirts so that he's in his wife beater because he's always in a fucking wife beater <laughs> yeah like okay <laughs> he's a wild man I want to shout out how cool the deterioration of ex of uh, Xavier's powers. Is when he does those like has those yeah. psychic storms and like the the scene when they're in Oklahoma and like the the seizure happens and then Logan has to like the fight casino? his way upstairs to yeah, yeah, the yeah. casino. I think is like one of my favorite just like one minute. It's not even a fight sequence. It's just like a murder sequence. But when like, their eyes move, yeah, that's my fa that's exactly my favorite <laughs> moment when he's like they're frozen and like he just does the little eye look. I yeah. fucking love that. It's interesting because it, it really describes like what's going on because they're not like frozen in time. They're conscious. They're just like paralyzed, yeah. right? So. Yeah, that's a great scene. Um, what do you... There's obviously a lot of stuff here with, like, the Mexican border and stuff, and, you know, Gabriella is... is did you guys, like... I Could you identify any sort of, like, message or theme there with, like, 
immigration or border I dynamics. Think, well, the theme is that there, there's looser rules in Mexico because they say that this shit was illegal in, in U.S. and Canada, but they did it in Mexico. They had these these mm. subjects that were born in the lab. I mean, like, like mutants have always been, like, other, and I think, like, as a contemporary theme, there having Mexicans be, like, the other, like, illegal immigrants being the other. This is what I was looking for. Yeah. <laughs> I really like the, uh, An allegory. I mean, like, I knew it was an allegory for something. I just, like, couldn't, like, put my finger on it, mm-hmm. but, like, yeah, you're right. The, the mutants, like, I, there, I think there's some interpretations for sure, and I think this is the most popular one, that, like, they were a stand-in for, like, LGBTQ mm-hmm. people. Uh, in the 60s or it's, 70s or whatever. It, that's a strong one, but it's kind of all others. It's like, yeah. you have a handicap, you have to wear glasses, just yeah. any, anything like that. Like if Cyclops, you're different right? and you are treated poorly because you're different, mm-hmm. the X-Men are here for you. Yeah. Which has always been a nice thing. I feel like <clears throat> I'm not excited for when Disney does X-Men and they're called woke for doing X-Men. <laughs> and I'll be like, X-Men was always woke, my yeah, friends. Yeah. <laughs> it was very woke. Like, you can you can, you can, can kind of push back and make an argument that, like, not all superheroes have been woke, but the X-Men, if you're going to make a complaint yeah, about... Su- <laughs> the X-Men are the woke the superheroes. Yeah, just look at it first class. It's like, yeah. mutant and proud. Yeah. You know, yeah. If you, we're here. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I like the um, one thing in this movie. The... I just love world building shit. I love the found footage of the facility because mm. I just read an article about these Romanian gulags that existed in like the during the Soviet era and into the 90s where mm. these they had a, basically there was like a population problem like the dictator there was like we need to have as much population as possible. Mm. So then they had all these incentives set for people to have kids, but they also it, people couldn't like take care of these kids. So they th- they institutionalized them like uh you know the government put them yeah. up but then they also had this like special schools for irredeemables oh. which is like disabled kids and then uh also kids that don't even have like like you were being an irredeemable if you had a cleft palate oh wow. it, it, like so there was these kids that just were treated like the kids in this movie they lived in these labs they never got to go outside and experience snow they never had their families they never had their own bedroom it was just horror yeah. and i read this article about it and seeing this uh movie it totally reminded me of yeah. that and i thought like um you know whenever there's like a touch of reality and something like this it just makes it so much more like visceral and compelling i think they did a really good job making it feel real and like hard to watch like when when she gives a line she's like they started putting kids to sleep and it's the shot of the kid you know like having a needle put in and you're like oh they're they're really doing this and it sets the stakes really high for when they capture the kids they're not just like you know gonna train them and yeah make them weapons again no they're gonna fucking like kill every single one of them because they're a liability a corporate liability yeah, yeah. even when x24 is fucking up those uh texans it's just like oh no shit he's, he's yeah. killing public that's the whole thing we're trying to like contain yeah. this honestly that's one of the things that was sort of that sort of took me out of it as well was the fact that they they keep rushing in to try and get these kids and how many goons get fried or stabbed or whatever like put set on fire like so many like can you have a better strategy well have like electric nets or something 100 percent. well and we know like i i found a couple of the fights i had to turn my brain off a little bit where you do they, for sure they aren't shooting <laughs> yeah. They don't shoot for right. They're just pointing guns and you're letting, yeah, it letting Laura kill Well, them. it almost looks like they're trying not to use... Like, they have their guns, but they don't want to use the guns or something like that. But There's, I feel like if it's corporate liability, that doesn't make sense. Like, I guess maybe it's well, because... Well, he, he says don't shoot, she heals early on. But it's like, they, wouldn't they know that adamantium bullets... Could yeah. kill her. I don't know. It's it's a nitpick. I, it's they it's don't a time to hit the button. It. It's a time it's to go a, to wait, nitpicks. It sort of makes sense that she... Uh, I lost. I think you said it though. Like they should have had a smarter strategy for. There was one shot in particular that really, really bothered me. Where at the smelting plant, uh, she's already killed like most of the guards, and (laughs) we see the shot like she's looking uh, past the camera, and then we see a guard coming up on her from behind, and (laughs) and he just like runs all the way up to her, and like puts a hand on her, and she kills him. I'm like, what did you think was gonna happen? (laughs) She just murdered your entire squad. That's the thing with Wolverine in general. It's like, you know he's got to close the distance. Yeah. He's yeah. going to charge at you. Yeah. All right. Anyway, sorry. You can hit the button now if you want. Let's do it. Nitpicks. I have a few, like, writing-based. Like, they're all kind of hit picks. Nice. And I kind of want to rapid fire through those. I also have, like, my normal hit picks and nitpicks as well. Um, here's a writing one, which is a world-building one. When... Pierce is meeting with Logan for the first time in the back of his car. I thought his character introduction was so cool. Oh, so I, I automatically was like, I like this. That was well acted. That yeah. guy's good. Boyd Holbrook. He did a great job. Yeah. And he says, uh, 
he says, well, I saw this crime scene and it was either Freddy Krueger Kruger or a, a tiger. And that couldn't make sense. One being that uh, is a fictional character and the other being yeah. extinct. Yeah, that's a tiger. Because oh. tigers are extinct. It's a little world building thing there, nice. Blade Runner-esque. And it's just, it's cool. It's a little subversion. It's like the last word in the sentence. So you think he's going to say an animal or something like that. Yeah. Uh, so that was just tight. Yeah. There are a number of those little like, well, some of them are little like that, and others are like a little bit bigger. Like when you know uh, Logan's talking to the farmer Will about the genetically modified corn yeah. and how like uh, we, they pump it into everything, and and I was like, oh, is this like a stance against like GMO food? It's well, tied I, in later to transgen, right? And yeah, right. rice. I like though, like the, they do the little like character beats or like the thematic beats too, where he's like. Oh, like you make corn or I make corn syrup uh, and they put it all in the energy drinks and all this stuff. You know, I remember when when a bad day was just a bad day. Right. I thought that was a cool line. Yeah. I yeah. also like the intro to that scene when they're like, it's the field and it kind of looks almost sci fi where he talks about like, oh, it's like dinosaurs, you know, these like 20 Those ton bodies like, yeah. with the little heads. And I was like, oh, it's a cool little bit of like realistic, grounded sci fi ness yeah. that makes you kind of just feel like you're part of a different world. It's a, it's the children men thing where instead of it, it, it's where the future just makes you think about the world today. Yeah. Right. It's not like the the technology is not so advanced that it seems inaccessible to us. No. Oh, I was going to say uh, earlier when I said I had a lot to say and I forgot this one point. Um, <laughs> when they say that there's not that many mutants left, I was thinking it's almost like it's not necessary, but it's almost necessary for that to be the way the world is in this movie. Because in all the other movies, it's like I said before, it's always like there are some mutants. And when there's an encounter with a mutant, you're like, whoa, what the fuck? Like he has claws. What is that? Blah. Yeah. And if they didn't have them all almost extinct in this movie, the other way they would have had to have gone is a fully integrated mutant society. Right. You know, where, and they've had that in the comments where there's like mutant town part of yeah, New York yeah. and stuff. Yeah. But it, it's almost like it keeps it consistent like the rest of the movies where the world is mostly like our world, but there's a, some mutants. And so it's almost like they kind of had to have it this way. Yeah. Well... Uh, to to right to, if they didn't want to go full on like comics world where mutants are everywhere, yeah. I mean yeah, that, that seems like that takes way more world. world I feel building. like I would like to see that though. Maybe maybe we'll maybe we'll get it if uh, Disney actually. I think uses we're gonna the... get a more straight lace, straight faced X Men version. I like that this feels very much a part of our world. Yeah, like it feels much more believable. I agree. I don't as a nitpick. I don't love the kid with powers i didn't like which, i don't know which kid all the kids all the oh. kids with powers? i feel like the movie's tone kind of changes when there's like kids running and stuff and like the fighting i don't hate it but it just like i don't know it comes come, becomes that a little feels, less that feels less western and more triple uh, a yeah. well the nitpick that i have for that is that they're not like we we see laura the whole time and i'll grant that like because she's based on wolverine and wolverine's the most badass that she should be the most badass mm -hmm. but they are too fucking useless yeah like the, the other kids yeah like they're yeah. all tied up like they do use their powers to like electrocute people through that truck and stuff like that but it just seems like how did you all get captured why are you not helping right now i like mean there's, there's the the girl who can control the plants and like shoots like the wood and stuff and i'm like that part was annoying too because like why didn't that guy just shoot her in the head while she was conjuring all that shit when it sounds like they should have i get it like they were on the run but it felt like they could have come up with a cooler use of their powers to fight back and like how to be a cooler encounter there needed to like, be some extra like sequences where like they're just fucking shit up just like well, she does the whole movie I, I i i'm of two minds about it because on one hand it's it seems kind of silly that you know she's this like badass warrior and the rest of them are just kind of like scared kids but at the same time it makes total sense because she has logan's dna and logan is fucking insane and he's like the Wolverine, you oh, can't okay. control him. So that she, actually does make sense. She's that she like, be more feral than the others. Yeah, she has the blood rage, and they're all just like scared kids. You know, it's like even if you have like super cool powers, they probably don't know how to control them super well. They've been oppressed. Kids and do respond to abuse differently their entire life, and yeah. maybe they've been well. And even if you have the capability to fight back, a lot of times, like oppressed peoples and groups, like. They they don't because of fear because it's been ingrained in them that you can't fight back. So I think that that made sense to me. Okay. Well, that no been, though, because the way that these guys were raised and this was the failure of the program that Rice alluded to. He's like, you can't nurture rage. It's like a it's a catch twenty two. Or like we want them to be so so savage. Right. We we tried to oppress them to the but point they where they wanted to kill us. us. <laughs> <laughs> like, but that's what we need from them. So yeah. Like, ah. I wish yeah. uh, the Magneto kid. I wish they had launched Laura. I wish that would have been like a cool Wait. team up. 
I think he was just telekinetic. Who's the Magneto I think kid? He's mad. I think the he's guy mad. who lifts the, the truck. truck that's yeah. Richter, I think his name is. Yeah. And he yeah. drops it. I think. I, I feel no, like it's got to be. A Magneto. I think. I thought his. Who's, who's telekinetic in the X Men? Jean Grey. No, yeah, but that'd I be thought boring. his power was like Earth. No, no, that's the. Because his name's Richter. Richter Shale. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I think it was. I, 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 I'm, I'm looking it up. All right. I like uh, my head cannon is that it's Magneto. Well, he has that's other kids already. That's true. Wanda. Uh, yeah, and, and Quicksilver, yeah, Peter. And he's part of this timeline? No, the other timeline. I don't want to think about that right now. Uh, here's another <laughs> writing. Geokinesis. Hit he can move, shift, manipulate, and control all forms of rock and earthly substances. How do you pick up that truck then? Because he, you saw it. it, it the, the, the rock earth? picked him up. Yeah, oh, the earth picked him up. I missed that. Oh, the, he didn't the, pick the, up the truck by itself. The the earth went <laughs> oh, and lifted okay. it up. Yeah. I see. But there was some telekinetic people in there. I don't. I just don't remember who it was. Um, it's awesome how quickly the mom or the nurse dies so they can just get to logan and the girl together like asap yeah. she dies so fast yeah i was just like that is nice that is good pacing it's a brutal death there's I, another sweet cut too where um it's when pierce is interacting with logan he's right in his face and he's got his like metal hand he reveals that and he's like you're not the only one who's been enhanced and then the next thing that happens is he gets hit in the head by the uh yeah. <laughs> pipe and it shows the girl and you're like she's that been enhanced awesome yeah like, it's just like that's just awesome visual storytelling so I, good i think his hand is one of my nitpicks though because i feel like it doesn't really add anything and i'm constantly distracted by the cg genius of it yeah some there there are there's Dude. that and some other vfx in the movie that kind of look bad even for 2017 because like that was five years ago but yeah. i feel I like other movies at that time looked pretty really good. looking pretty stuff. good especially the dh like the x24 looks awesome yeah i think that looks pretty good i think the the one that really stood out to me is when he rams the, the fence the fence and yeah. it holds him it just looks really it looks tacky. weird yeah i like that they did that like a car doesn't get to go through the fence in this movie that's good and i think yeah. that's such a good es- that's such a good escalation of that sequence where they fight and they're killing all these people like it's so fucking thrilling and then they get in a car and then it's like a it's a chase and yeah. then the way he like pushes the other car in front to get it on the other side of the thing that's like it was awesome. It was weird when the yeah. fence was stuck to him, and he goes in reverse, and those motorcyclists hit the fence. Yeah, like, yeah. That was great. Oh, yeah. and when he's when he's uh, driving away, and he's dragging the fence, and there's a motorcyclist like holding onto the fence, and he goes and he shoots them. Like that was a real practical stunt, and it looks fucking awesome. That was mm-hmm. this children of men, man. That's what yeah. I'm saying. This is sh- oh, uh, sort of a nitpick for <laughs> yeah, me. Uh, you mentioned the found footage like thing that on on her phone on Gabriella's phone, and I was like, okay, this started out really good, but then it kept adding in more and more clips from like other uh, sources of footage that I'm like, how would she get that? And then there were also a bunch of shots where I'm like, how is this guy not seeing? Like one of them is just like. Um, rice the doctor is talking to another nurse on the other side of a door and the camera is looking through the window and the it's, camera the just, phone is it just right, becomes a little movie the phone is right on the other side of the of the yeah. window and i'm like he would see that it's right there oh, so well. it's like there are a few moments like that and i'm like okay this is pretty well edited for like a nurse <laughs> from a biotech firm to put together on her phone okay i mean anyway, it's, it's you're like, allowed to be yeah. a yeah. nick pick and i also thought it was just like maybe there's a, there's got to be a better way to info dump this stuff mm. Then like, okay, let me tell you the whole story with my three minute video, YouTube video. Like, I yeah, it was it was very telling, not showing. That's Although it was showing and telling, but writing hit pick. W- Logan says bad shit happens to the people I care about, and Laura says then I'll be fine. Yeah, that's a great, that's a great little line out of that. <laughs> then one I'll too. be fine. Uh, I just want to shout out how iconic. Logan is because he just can deliver the stupid jokes that are really dumb but they are fucking funny coming out of his mouth like when he's having that confrontation at the, about the water pipe and the guy's like you know what's gonna happen next he's like yeah you got you and your buddies are gonna get back in your truck and you're gonna go play okie okie dickhead somewhere else <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like what he, he, but it made me laugh so hard there's lots of it made great you laugh <laughs> yeah I don't know why I don't know what okie dickhead me means he can say yeah his delivery I remember laughing so hard and I think it's um Days of Future Past, where like they're in a plane with Magneto. Magneto has like a tantrum and a big monologue, and he makes the plane fly around. All these dishes crash and shit. And when it's done, Logan goes, "You gonna clean this shit up?" <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking awesome. Yeah, he has oh. like, huge comedic potential. Oki. Yeah, what does Oki dickhead mean? Um, oh, okay. I've got two they're different. Play, they're something. playing cowboy. I've got two different interpretations. Mm. One is it's a rough translation of uh, a French insult called deco. Tet a coke. I bet it's not that. Which is like, okay, dick. Go, go to the other one. But that's a that's a that's a insult in French, and he said it in English. The other not a uh, chance. the other one is Oki, as in Oklahoma, and you're just like dickheads from Oklahoma. Okay. So okay, I don't know. that maybe. 
Makes it less funny. I wish I didn't know. It's almost funnier because I just didn't understand what it was. Uh, hit pick. You always want a very, you want your movie to be very specific and you want to see things. It's called, some people call this the promise of the premise. You want to see shit in this movie that can only be in this movie. In all the Wolverine movies, I can see him jumping around in claws and shit. Only in this movie can I see him do that while a little Wolverine jumps off his back. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Honestly, in, that, in those fights, in that fight scene, I was like imagining the comic book panels where like they're both like leaping into yeah. combat together. Or he just launches her. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like, like there's missile. so many like cool like dynamics they can do together. It's like Last of Us, except they're both superheroes. Yeah. There was an era, twenty the twenty tens were the era of of uh, dad figures and yep. dad and son su- yeah. da- dad and children yeah. stories. And they're all, they're good. Yeah. We might we might need a new story. It's but. a great I mean, it's done a lot, but I feel like a lot of the time it's done very well. Mm-hmm. I feel like most of the times that people attempt to tell a story about like a gruff anti-hero father learning how to be a parent, uh, it usually is good. God of War, yep. Last of Us, this Last one. Last of Us uh, remake, oh. Last of Us remaster, <laughs> Last of Us uh, show yeah. coming yeah. out in like a month. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hit pick when Xavier's saying sorry to everyone in the casino when they're oh my god because he just oh sat psychic god. blast heartbreaking. He, Patrick Stewart acts the hell out of this role because he's not ninety years old, but no. you believe that he is. Like he, he's not ninety so years old. Sad. How old is he? Oh, I don't know how old he is in real life. Oh, he's probably almost eighty now. But yeah, but uh, I just mean I, I just felt so sad. Like I saw my dying grandparents in him. Yeah, they're both dead now. They're all dead. But well, uh, yeah, it was. Well, he's just also different than Wolverine. Wolverine wouldn't do, like Wolverine would walk through that crowd and go, maybe he'd go sorry, sorry, and you'd be like, ha ha ha, yeah, yeah. fuck him up, Wolverine. But when <laughs> when Xavier does, maybe he'd it, stab a couple on his way out. Exactly. But when it's like Xavier, like he he's dedicated his life to like helping people and being a, almost a pacifist. Yeah. So, well, that's why it was well, so tragic because like he's been the moral soul of the X-Men and now he's the biggest cause. And of, he can't control his powers. Yeah. And he's it's helping people usually spend his life helping people control their powers. I've, I've, it, I think it's indicated. I didn't see this when I was see, uh, watching the movie, but I uh, reading stuff after, I think, I guess it's supposed to be the case that he killed the X-Men by accident. Yeah. So in the Winchester, West, Westchester. Westchester event, he has a psychic uh, seizure like this. He kills 600 people, including some X-Men. Oh, I saw it was, <laughs> Injured 600 people okay. and killed the X-Men. But I don't, I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, and then he ends up reca- like remembering that, that that happened and having a crying monologue with the guilt of it. And it turns out he was just saying all that to X-24. Yeah, yeah that, was a, uh, that, was, ugh, that was hurtful. And they just got stabbed yeah, in the but chest. Then it's just like it, it kind of oh. prepares you for the rest of the scene because it's just like, get ready. The, rest, the next like few minutes are going to be horrible. Yeah, it's... Hit, hit pick is the um, piano score when they drive the car into the fence. Yeah, it's not just like a duh, 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 like. Um, I wrote that down too. It's like this cool, crazy it was so piano. Cool. Like it was it, unexpected. You don't have a score like that in any of these movies. Yeah, it was fantastic. Um, hit pick for me was just getting like an overall hit pick for the movie. It was so fun to hear these characters that we've seen in these other movies, like playing it more family friendly, just saying fucking shit so often. Like I feel like well, they got so one. Many. They got one F word per movie in the other ones. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I I watched a clip of well, I, I watched some of Days of Future Past as well, and uh, yeah, there's there's the scene where he tells him to like fuck off, like uh, oh, yeah. James McAvoy's. Ex. That was a that's great cameo yeah, in that movie. Yeah. That's a great cameo. By who? Oh, not Days of Future Past. First class. In First Class, they're recruiting. They're using Cerebro. They're recruiting all these mutants, and then. Uh, Professor X and Megan do walk into a bar and Hugh Jackman's Logan is sitting there and they just walk up they're like hey and he's just like fuck off oh. and that's like a big laugh from the audience and they and then oh, they I re- wasn't talking about that but they, yeah they reference that in a later movie oh well, yeah. in Days of Future Past like we tried to recruit you because he's recruiting uh, and, yeah he's oh, saying I'll tell you the same was... thing that you told us but those years ago gotcha that I I didn't I didn't make that connection it's good um the pediatric cancer study this is like a question pick what was that about. Like, does she have the? Uh, it shows him looking at the their files, and it said pediatric cancer study. It's just the cover story. Oh, that's what they're pretending it yeah. is. But I thought the children were like born in the lab, so why do they need to pretend that? I think that there's like always the possibility of like you know outside sources. Mm. And they need to hand documents to people, so they need a cover sure. story. That's how I. Oh, okay, it. okay. I, I was think like, so. I was I like, oh, does she have related. cancer? But she keeps healing it. Like, well, I uh, thought Wolverine had cancer because Pierce says like I, that thing below the belt. I thought he had like a 
ball cancer or something like that, but it's, it's just his uh, adamantium is pointing you. is poisoning uh, him. So it's, yeah. He doesn't have cancer. But. That's a uh, there's something about that. But that, Deadpool does that. Your that's true. That your own skeleton poisoning you from the inside. Like the idea of like being separate from your poison, like yeah. just flesh on top of this metal skeleton, and it's the yeah. source of all his power too. Yeah. That's really good. Big hit fit, uh, hit pick for me for uh, for Laura was like her sucking out the bullets and spitting them out. Yeah, because I was like, these it, it would probably be like super traumatic for the kid to, for a kid to deal with this much violence. But at the same time, when you heal super fast, so there's no real consequences for violence. It's almost like maybe it's just like play for her like obviously she's oh. she knows that she's killing people and it's it is traumatic but i'm saying that there's probably a, like a big reduction in the effect that trauma is going to have on you when yeah. you when you don't really have the fear that you're going to die yeah because for like sure but she's shot also, and you just spit them out there's that shot of her doing that self-harm where she's yeah. cutting her uh, own arm and watching it yeah re- heal right away and doing it again and again in this little like curled up corner of her room oh that's a dark shot it man. is because that's- you see that like <laughs> even before you see her actually doing that you you're like it looks like she's cutting herself and i was like okay this maybe makes sense as people who are like you know obviously super 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 depressed and and fucked up because they've been raised in a laboratory and whatever but then you there's a whole another element on top of that and I, it was beautiful. well the fact that it's healing it still yeah. hurts every time yeah right so she gets that pain you don't know whether she's doing that because she's like trying to like kill herself or like end something or like feel something but then at the same time realizing that she can heal like that i don't know that's one of the cool things about wolverine it's like just because he heals doesn't mean he's not suffering yeah like yes. he's still that's why he gets like if you watch all these movies in a short time you realize how much like he's just screaming all the time <laughs> <laughs> yeah because and it's the same scream whether he's in x2 jumping off a ledge to come down and plunge his claws into like a bunch of soldiers or he's logan uh, and he's using a shovel to beat up a truck it's the same scream <laughs> 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 uh, he's man Big shout out to Hugh Jackman. He's a great he's, actor. He was, he's the most iconic portrayal of a single character in a superhero movie. Yeah. Yeah, probably. Yeah, just it's, across like generations of these movies. I, I like there are times where I feel conflicted because I'm like, sometimes I see the Hugh Jackman that does the musicals and I'm like, <laughs> You're pretending to be this guy. Well, that's what you know? acting is, pal. Well, I, don't, I know I don't, it is, I don't think but the I'm role saying pushes that... Hugh Jackman. I think this is probably one of the easier roles to play mm. from an acting perspective. It's a physical role. I'm sure it was hard to be on set and do all these yeah, fights. Apparently, and this is the hardest yet to work on any of the X Men movies. But in terms of like what it requires from him to like get into the character and deliver, I think it's probably pretty easy to be Wolverine. Yeah, if I you're guess Hugh Jackman. I guess all I'm saying go is harder that... on this one. He does some pretty good. This one for sure. One. Oh, big time! And yeah. Shout out to the makeup in this movie. He looks decrepit. That's probably just what he looks looks like yeah <laughs> i guess all i'm saying is that i agree with you that he is like perfect for the role more or less but i'm just saying that i feel like there are other people who could be typecast as these like gruff people like like i'm thinking like i'm not saying that he would be a better wolverine but when i think of a wolverine type archetype i'm thinking of like john bernthal or whatever the guy that plays the punisher yeah. in the new things where it's like that guy is not doing musicals <laughs> but with like Hugh Jackman, you can kind of see it's like he's a beautiful man. He's got nice features. He's got the broad shoulders. He's got the like typical Hollywood guy. And John Bernthal's like his nose is kind of fucked up, and he's got like a square jaw. Yeah. And, his identity is violent. Yeah. So like, and and you know, Wolverine in the comics is this kind of like short, stocky, he's like as like, wide as he is tall. Yeah. So there are times where I'm like, I still kind of think that we could have cast Wolverine a, a little bit better, but unquestionably. Like I'm not complaining. I guess I'm just saying Hugh Jackman act the, acted the hell out of it. Man. Well, I think by the I guess end of I also tenure. want to clarify. I'm not saying that it's like that anybody could be Wolverine. It's an easy role. I'm just saying it's an easy role for, for Jackman. Yeah, yeah he's yeah. such a he's, he's a, a phenomenal actor. actor. Yeah, it's, really uh, it's interesting because he had officially retired after Logan. That was his retirement, but it's right. been announced that he's in Deadpool, Deadpool three. Yeah, because apparently that was he has two regrets about retiring as Wolverine. One was that he never did a Deadpool movie, uh, and the other one is that he never appeared in an Avengers movie. And that would be a fucking bonkers little I, surprise. I like it, but at this point, I'm like, he's pretty old to be Wolverine. Like, I don't know. Yeah, I, he like, shows you can up. see he, he's so yoked now. Whenever he, like his veins are so on the surface, because mm-hmm. you can tell it's like he's powered by steroids compared to like an X one and two. I do not want him to show up in an Avengers movie. I it do. Would, it would no. It would be bad. It would. Yeah. It would. It would just unless be, it's in the way that just, Xavier was in. I just. Yeah, I think that it's not going to be like he's going to be a main character. It's going to be like. 
they're going to jump universes and they're going to land in one and they're going to be a street fight and then he's going to show up and be like, what's up, bub? I think, I honestly think the main reason why I don't want to see that is because it wouldn't make sense for him to be old. So like, yeah. they'd have to de-age him and that would be weird. Mm. And I think that every time they try to do this like, we're bringing the old person into the new franchise so you can be like, look, uh, it just it, it just never feels right. Like what? Give me an example yeah. of. I'd rather that has the been I'd rather well. the Avengers cameo of Wolverine be a tease of the new Wolverine. Who the hell that's gonna be? Yo. That is like one of the biggest shoes to fill ever, man. Yeah, it's it's it will be hard. Okay, my I last, hope that they go completely different direction. My last hit bit before we talk about what's what's next for the for the franchise. I'm not a box of avocados, Logan. <laughs> <laughs> that's a really Never ripe when you need them to be. <laughs> I don't know what he means by that. Here's a nitpick. Why are all these kids from the same facility, but only Laura is like the Spanish one? Yeah, I thought that was weird. Uh, that was, yeah, I, like, I was going to not other, These other kids speak English. What the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> I could, like, you could make an argument that Richter kind of like has a very, 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 very slight Spanish accent. And they just learned English in the facility very well. They but. could be higher intelligence or something. Some of those kids, like, because mm. they're kids, but like they could be 200 IQ. Mm. No, they've learned other. I know. feel like, I think that they learn English in Mexico. Well, she uh, does speak some English as yeah. well. But, but so, they're in a facility though. They're not. Yeah, but I, <laughs> but I imagine that, you know, they obviously learn how to speak and. Uh, yeah. You know, they're they're not like entirely un unadjusted. They have some sort of education, so I imagine that they t tell them how to speak Spanish. I have and one last hit pick, and it's the way that they match when Laura gets harpooned, and she just like rips it out and yeah. just keeps fighting. Whereas when Logan gets harpooned, it's a big deal. He, yeah, he's, he's really struggling. well. That's the thing is like in the Wolverine and in this movie, same directors. Whenever his healing ability gets compromised. You just care so much more than other people. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh no, now he's down to the level of a normal person, but I care way more about him getting hurt because he feels so vulnerable now because you just take for granted his healing yeah. factor. It's such a big part of him. Uh, it just ups because, the stakes so much. You hate to see it. Which is funny because like, I would say that other heroes with powers, when they get weakened, it feels cheap. Like, you know, when Superman, when someone uses crypt, crypt, uh, kryptonite, you're just kind of like, oh, okay, here we go. This is regular Superman. You know that he's going to get his powers back at some point. Mm -hmm. and, but like with Wolverine, be, because like he does, he can get impaled and he feels the pain, but like, okay, it might be better after, but that doesn't lessen, like, as the you pain. said, the pain of the like... And and I heard uh, I think it was James Mangold that uh, was talking about the movie, and he was like, because his healing factor is failing, he's in chronic pain. Because when his healing factor is working, he feels the pain of something, but then it heals and the pain's gone. But because his he's like perpetually in a state of like trying to heal his body and it not doing it properly, he's just feeling pain all the time. Well, he's got all these wounds. Like, yeah, he gets impaled by X twenty four's claws. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And like he doesn't die, but like they're huge wounds. And he's yeah. just limping around the whole movie. Uh, uh. Yeah, that limp was a nice little touch. <clears throat> Love it. Uh, the way that those all the kids team up and kill Pierce with all their powers all at once, and yeah. he just gets consumed. Like that was sick. But that's how they should have killed Xander Rice. Yeah, the guy who did it to them. Yeah. See, that's so, the revenge. To me, that maybe represented the fact that he was like kind of a goofy comic book villain. Uh, in the style of the earlier movies, like he's the evil mad scientist and oh, he's the big bad guy. We're going to have to defeat him. And instead of having this like, you know, big moment where he dies, he just gets fucking ganked. He gets shot in the head and bam, he's, he's done. And be, like you don't, that's not signaled to you. You don't know yeah. that that's going to happen. Then he just dies. And I'm like, okay, that's the movie kind of saying that like, screw those old like superhero movies and the cheesy factor. This is like, we are killing the superhero mythos. We are Maybe. deconstructing it. And so, eh. that's I don't know. That's how I thought of Maybe, it. Maybe, but if I think about it going the other way, it was like, what if they just shot Pierce like that, and then the kids got to team well, up? Well, then it's like not Pierce that. was Pierce was more of a personal antagonist for us. Yeah. Like he had had interactions as an audience. I feel like we're yeah. more invested in that stage. I don't know if I I think as an audience, if you see the kids take out their tormentor, you're like, yes, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. That I is think better. the movie so would have had good. to invest a little bit more into seeing him torment. Well, it doesn't it doesn't make sense to have him running around like no. Pierce is going to run around and, and continue to be an antagonist and chase them down and stuff for a couple extra minutes whereas rice is just as an old man like he's not going to do that so well yeah but i i i don't know i feel like they needed we needed the scientist but uh i think he felt kind of extraneous and so i understand why the movie just kind of like killed him and got him out of the way whereas it felt really good to have the kids feel to see the kids like you know 
uh, yeah, to get, get there just... Uh, but you know what I mean. Yeah, but they didn't get it as good as they could have because he's not... He's the no, one but, who did no, it to him and he's no, so no, evil. I'm, I'm, I completely disagree. Pierce is the antagonist. Rice is a stand-in for like big shadowy people or whatever. But Pierce is the one who was abusing them. We see him dragging them around by their feet. He like is, you know... Uh, he shoots the guy and he's like, it's just a flesh wound, like deal with it. Like he is the one that's abusing them directly, even if his orders are coming from the guy higher up. Okay, I see I what you're saying. I'm not sure if I agree with that. Like to the children, they're probably more afraid of Pierce than they are of Rice. Because mm, he was the direct dispenser the of The enforcer of yeah, it all, yeah. yeah. Anyways, also that scene, they kind of like use the elements to uh like he gets tied down by the vines and he's being electrocuted and there's ice shooting at him blah, blah. and uh that's like there's sort of like a nature versus man-made technology thing in the in the in the film like it's oh, yeah. mutants natural mutants versus cyborgs which are man-made and the this corporation is trying to like recreate this natural thing with with the kids but it gets out of their control I guess that's there and so now nature reclaims Mm-hmm. Yeah, the okay. cyborg. I like that. I like that. I thought that was nice. I like the cyborg element. Like, I don't think it would be better if he just didn't have that robot arm because I, th- yeah. I think it's cool. It's like, yeah, they're trying to ha- enhance themselves. It's everyone's trying to be powerful. It's a, it's like an arms race. Yeah, a literal arms race. Yeah. Um, yeah. I feel like they could have done a, something to develop that idea just a little bit more. Yeah, it was definitely like it's. Yeah, I think that idea is cool, but there's not much. Wolverine's fighting cyborgs all the time in the comics, yeah. but. I mean, they have, That's like, the, the genetically modified food thing. They have the cyborgs. Okay. They have the, like, trying to control nature. So it's, like, it's there, but it's not really, like, front That's and center. That's not the focus, no. Yeah. I think that's all I got for the nitpicks and hitpicks and everything. Yeah, that's all um, I got. I do want to wrap this up, but I do want to answer. We got three questions and an email from David Curry, who's a fan. And I figured we'd just uh, we'd answer those. Sure. Um, first question, are there any books we'd recommend? We've talked a lot about movies and shows oh. and stuff. How about books? Fiction, nonfiction doesn't matter to this guy. Well, I used to read a ton of books uh, when I was younger, but um, the I will say, if you haven't read Dune, that was like the, yeah, the think- biggest. I hadn't read Dune until James like recommended. You pushed really hard for Dune, and I read that, so I'm not totally oppositional when you try to get me to do mm-hmm. stuff. That's true. That's true. I won't. I I ended up watching. But that, that was because you would like you weren't excited for the movie or something because you had to read the book first or something. I was like, okay. what? No. It's not, I don't want to oh, get into I, it. I I was a little dismissive at first, but anyways, Dune uh, is like Lord of the Rings level great to me, and maybe not. I don't know. You don't have to. I don't want to say better. Instruction too. I if would you recommend read, read, um, Dune. Read it if you like uh, nonfiction. I really, really had my mind expanded by. Um, Dr. Christensen's book, The Innovator's Dilemma, hmm. and to a lesser extent, The Innovator's Solution. It's like a business technology kind of book about how do you think about technology? Like at what point should Apple be just making CPUs versus a whole integrated product? And it like just breaks it down of like how this happens and the cycle of it. It's fucking awesome. Hmm. Uh, recommend that. Sapiens, you know. <laughs> I can't Harari, read. you know those books? I like, can't uh, do nonfiction. Homo Deus. I, I get, love nonfiction. I get distracted. My Homo ADHD Deus. won't let it. I can read no, I can read fiction books with all of those concepts baked in. Tell it to me as a story. Don't let, don't make me read a textbook. I feel like the last really good series I read was Old Man's War. That was a while back. That? It's like a sci-fi story where it's like humanity's at war with aliens and basically the human soldiers are when you when you're old, you can choose to join the army and they give you like a new body and shit. And oh. so it's it's cool. It's like it's uh a, a sort of jar heady but it's like got interesting sci-fi takes and it's it's like a really easy read but it's it's got interesting stuff it gets mm. worse as the series goes on like the first book's the best and then it gets slightly you know less interesting but it's highly recommend the first one second question also for david uh you mentioned years ago you had like this huge google doc with all the movies you've watched and their scores and stuff um does that exist and is it, it accessible it does exist the i think the best thing is the what's that movie app a red dot or red letter letterbox uh, letterbox letterbox Google tv i think that's the most up to date i stopped keeping up with it but so someone could follow you on that i think so let me look up is your name just david yeah. while, while you look that up uh the third question is what styling shampoo do we use <laughs> in our hair shampoo uh, i don't know styling um, product <clears throat> here's the products i had to i don't even know what they are by name they just happen to be what i have i have this karis stase capital <laughs> forest one i've had for like a year and a half it's nice. Uh, there's and then there's this. 
authentic 1950s classic men's grooving demeter from union and this is more of a clay and that's what you're using i love that stuff uh, I, I i use his hair stuff i use it so little every time i don't care you don't even well, know i don't I've really use this one because this thing's almost still still like basically full i Look know man like crazy. these things last forever i've literally had this for like two years yeah i like something that has a, is very matte mm-hmm. like very low shine and high hold and mm-hmm. that's hard to get i i haven't found anything else that i like as much as this stuff there you go. I guess I should buy my own tub. I didn't do my hair today at all, and you're wearing a hat, so fucking. <laughs> no, if you want your hair to look like this, be, maybe get he's, a born, hat. he's born with it. Maybe David, what Maybelline. are you doing with that letterbox thing? I'm trying to find my. Account. Wait, we didn't talk about what we want to see, but uh, I don't what do you, know. What do you want to see? Who knows? Oh, in the X Men? Yeah, the for X Men because now they're in the fold. They're yeah, in the I, Disney I fold. totally want a whole string of MCU things. I think it's going to be hard for them to, as David said, like try to do a radically different take because they kind of already did with first class. Like you've got X1 and X2, which are very different from first class trilogy. Yeah. And so it's like, can they go yet another new way? I feel like now the actors who played the young people in first class are now like basically the age or older where where the original actors were in the first X-Men in 2000, mm-hmm. right? Okay. So like... I feel like they could just be the new main X-Men. I think they're going. going to go to a young. I think they're going to do a teenage again? X-Men again. It's my guess. They'll, they'll reboot. I think it would be a bit of a bummer. I think Michael Fassbender as Magneto is awesome. And yeah. he's maybe my favorite character in the, the new ones. We said, we said we were going to talk more about the other X-Men movies, but we didn't. We, we did sort of. But the one thing that I was going to say about them is that like, I thought First Class was goofy, I didn't love that movie. Oh, I movie. think it's pretty good. Uh, I had I big problems. I think I had big it's problems. It's in the with, sevens for me. I yeah. think I had big problems with it just in terms of like some of the more cheesy, goofy there elements. There are of some it. cringe scenes. Yes. There's some bad childhood scenes. Like, yeah. notably when Xavier meets Mystique. Well, that's it, in Days of Future oh, Past. Yeah. No, they meet in first class. And they, they oh, show so that, that scene. Oh, that was a flashback. They sh- in, oh, okay. Yeah, they flash back to it, but it's so cringe. She's yeah. like, in fact, you never have to steal again. We've got lots of food. Yeah, I'm rich. Yeah. It's like, I'm it's, Harry Potter. It's so <laughs> fucking cringe. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so some of that was cringe. Uh, but the best part of those like X-Men reboot movies were uh, Xavier and and, uh, and Eric Magneto. Which, it's funny because they, they might also be the best part of the original ones too. Like Patrick Stewart and Ian McKellen yeah. might be the best part of the original yeah, trilogy. They're yeah, like, they uh, are. They're like, it's uh, like they're good and freaking Wolverine's good and uh, Jean Grey is, Grey is okay. But then like the like Storm and Toad and Sabretooth fucking sucks. And Night, Night, Nightwalker or Nightcrawler. Nightcrawler in X2 sick. is fucking awesome. That first He's fight sick. in the yeah. White House Nightcrawler so in cool. Apocalypse, not yeah. so awesome. I never really felt like that attached to Wolverine. I was always kind of like... I don't know. I never. It, it's I never called the sack. I never saw my. Yeah, trauma, I didn't. I didn't see myself in him. With Scott but I. But I definitely <laughs> loved. What's that? Uh, Say it again. Cyclops always gets <laughs> done Cyclops, dirty yeah. too. No, I saw myself in Cyclops. Cyclops is. I was dope. the nerd who was like, "Wait, don't take my girlfriend." <laughs> Except I didn't tell, care about girls in high school, so that wasn't even there. I'm sad that they did the apocalypse movie with um, the cast characters they did because it's it's like. His school for the gifted is like basically just formed and everyone's still a noob. Like like Cyclops like just showed up and like just came of age and then they're fighting Apocalypse. But Apocalypse is like one of their like fucking end game type. Yeah. Like if they if MCU did it, it would have been like Infinity War or Endgame to fight Apocalypse. And honestly, they could just do that again if they want. Like yeah. forget the other Apocalypse movie because Apocalypse is fucking cool. Mm. Not in yeah. that movie. <laughs> is there? <laughs> no, not do, in that movie. Do any of us know enough about the X Men lore to know whether there's like a future X Men where there's like a new cast of characters and new villains and stuff that they could incorporate into the MCU? Oh, uh, with different characters. There's futures where it's like you're in the future and Wolverine has one arm and Storm has a mohawk and they're and, 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 and they're partners. Like they're like in a uh, relationship and that shit's all cool. But that's the same I'm characters. Like, I'm thinking like a Batman Beyond situation yeah, where there, there is other x-men there's like future x-men but i don't think any of them are nearly as iconic. you don't want them what do you mean you don't want them so, you, i don't want to see look we've had two iterations now of these x-men i don't want to see a third one the thing like, is when you start the, reaching that's like that's like andrew garfield spider-man movie territory no, it's, it's like tom holland spider-man and that's but that better. one was good <laughs> yeah that's exactly. what i'm saying it's like they could do oh, okay maybe fine, maybe i think and I there's think, so yeah. much cool shit to do like bishop and cable like yeah. with uh, there's techno virus stuff. There's different timelines to go mm-hmm. to. Um, there's uh, genetic engineering shit with Mister Sinister. 
You know what we do? Fucking, there's lots of good stuff they do, to do. They do Deadpool starts the... He takes over the X-Mansion and starts the school and he runs it. Deadpool. Uh, honestly, Dead, Deadpool 3 wouldn't be the worst place to kickstart X-Men in this universe. I think they, they might, have to. Because that must gonna, be what they're doing. They're going to have him... Uh, well, my, my, cousin, Wolverine, my yeah. cousin who is my entry point into the whole X-Men throughout my childhood, he was saying to me that they'll probably incorporate Deadpool into MCU through Loki, through the TVA. Because oh. he'll be fucking up uh, the timelines. Because in the... in I didn't see Deadpool 2, but I think he fought like the the Weapon X Deadpool from, or Weapon 11 Deadpool from the Wolverine Origins movie. I don't remember, but... Man, when's Loki Season 2 coming out? Anyways, we're gonna wrap I'm this up, I'm excited for that. Ah, don't doesn't... you just love doing this podcast? Yeah. Never... <laughs> <laughs> One million years! <laughs> Thousand year Reich! <laughs> Alright, guys. Thanks for watching. You can continue to show us your love at um, hello at they'rejustmovies.com or at TJMPod on Twitter. Is there another place? You just yell off the mountain tops. Just Google it. Here, here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Google any one of us. Next week, Sarah episode Die Hard, you became yeah. Mother Trucker. Woo. And summer 2023, Loki season two. Love you. See you later. Well, that's that's going to be around the same year as the Deadpool movie then. Heck yeah. Or is that 24? I, I don't, don't know. I don't Bye. Know. See you later. <laughs>